the topic. So you know what we're talking about today, and we have a special guest. So let me um let me let me let me let me let me show you all who we're going to be talking to today. We're going to be talking to Princella. Hey, Princella. All right, I'm going to introduce you in just a moment. Let me do some some housekeeping. All right, so welcome in, everybody. Welcome. I am your host, Tanya TKO. I am a self-love specialist from tanyatko.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. On this channel, we typically use viral video topics so that we can use some in-the-moment self-love lessons that we learn from looking at what, what is happening in in these topics and us being able to transfer that into what we need to do for our own lives. So today we're talking about lesbianism. That's what we're getting into, lesbianism. Is that the answer? Is that the answer for black women? You know, they have the Save Yourself Black Men movement and we have a lot of content creators who are coming up with ways to empower women and figuring out ways that women can be able to uh, live their best lives. So without further ado, let me bring forward the queen maker. So welcome in everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right, so Princella. Oh my goodness, you are, you have, you have, you're gracing our, our broadcast today. So first of all, for the people who don't know you, introduce yourself so that they can find out who you are, what you're about, all of that. Okay, well, my name is Princella, and many refer to me as the Queen Maker, uh, and others refer to me as Pastor P. I am a social reformer and for women's empowerment. So I have a background in cell and molecular biology. I have, uh, I was commissioned as an officer in the uh, army. I have a PMP certification project management and I was top sales in the car industry, cell phone industry and direct marketing industry. And so I have a unique perspective that has allowed me to take all of my information that I've come across in life and package that in a way where it gives women clarity, not only about themselves, but also about men so that they can make better decisions in their life. And as a result of that, I am known as the new lesbian cult leader, which oh is my how Lord. we end up here today on this topic. <laughs> You coming out the box? You known as the lesbian cult maker? Yeah, I'm. I'm just listen. I'm the lesbian maker. I'm the stud maker. I'm the single woman maker. You name it. I'm all this. So yeah, let's go ahead and address the lesbian cult leader. Well, all right. So you ready to just jump into it? You that you you done with the intros? You jumping? You you jumping right in, huh? I let's, guess let's let's go ahead and meet it head on. Okay. Well, all right. Well, you know what? Okay. Listen. All right. Okay. Let's 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 meet it head on then. Talk. Oops. I'm talk. What what is is it a rumor or is it the truth, Ruth? Well, what is what a rumor? What is what a rumor? Am I a lesbian cult leader or am I myself a lesbian? Okay, so let's let's break it down. First and foremost, I absolutely do date women, right? I do date women, and I'm not ashamed to say that. And I guess people have an issue because the messenger of the truth, which is rooted in scientific fact, which is rooted in philosophical fact psychological fact and sociological fact, the leader of this truth that is being spoken happens to be lesbian, right? Now, I did not. Wait, did hold not on, hold on, hold on. Start out this way. Hold on, hold on. So you are a lesbian? Yeah, I mean, that's the way y'all perceive me. No, 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 right? no, no, Since you're, you're speaking your truth now. Are you a lesbian? No. 
Yeah. No, I'm saying I date women. So is that the way you perceive a woman who dates women? Is that the name y'all call it? Cool. I'll roll with that. <laughs> Listen, I'll roll with that. So if that's the label that you give it, then yeah, I guess I am. According to y'all. No, right? no, 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 so, no. According to you. Because accor- you speaking the truth according to you. No, 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 no. Because I don't live by labels. Okay. See, oh, I'm, okay. A, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sapiosexual and I'm a demisexual, which puts me on the asexual spectrum. Right. So my sexuality is not rooted in biology it's rooted in psychology so i'm only attracted to people sexually based on intelligence and based on emotional connection so once i came to the conclusion that men were not capable of these things i decided to direct my energy towards women whom i know are capable of those things now if you decide that that's lesbianism then i'll go with it okay Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, well, so to me, a lesbian is a woman who exclusively dates women. I think bisexual is what covers women who date both. I'm not sure what a demisexual is. Is that, is that bisexual? Demisexual? What? No, it's, it's, no. Demisexual is on the asexual spectrum. So I don't have a sexual attraction to either men or women neither one of them it's all mental so demisexual are individuals who only have a sexual attraction or desire once they have an emotional or strong emotional connection with someone so i have to be strongly emotionally connected to someone i could be strongly emotionally connected to a man or i could be strongly emotionally connected to a woman right so and I'm a sapiosexual. I know you right. heard a sapiosexual, correct? Yes, because I'm a sapio. Okay. I'm, so I'm, there... I'm a sapio as well. Right. Right. So you could be you could be in the presence of a man, right? He could be physically attractive. Right. But if he opens his mouth and he's dumb as hell, your sexual desire goes, <clears throat> right? And yeah. you have no sexual. That's me. I'm always in my head. I'm an Aquarius. So I'm always in my head. So I view the majority of males is unintelligent okay so vroom my sexual attraction is non-existent for them and because i have decided that men are incapable of deep emotional connections spiritual and mental connections since they are not I have no compatibility with them on the emotional side. So after my research to understand the difference between men and women biologically and psychologically, Mm -hmm. I realized that everything that I wanted spiritually, mentally, and emotionally was never going to come from a man. I've tried, I've been married, I've dated these guys, and it just ain't coming from them. And so once I realized that, I was like, well, just because they can't do it, who this, who the hell says I got to go without it? Oh. I don't have to go without it. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Okay. So, okay. Oh, my goodness. There's so much. You know what? Listen. <laughs> There's go, on, so let much. Your head, go on, Tanya. Let your head spin for a second. Okay. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I need to go back to the, let's go back to the root. Let's go back to the root. All right. Number one, you said that your background was in molecular biology. What does that mean? Cell and molecular biology? Okay. So you have, there are multiple sciences and there are multiple disciplines when it comes to these sciences. So when we're talking about molecular and cellular biology, Mm -hmm. it's solely rooted in you know, molecules, right? When you get into the organic chemistry component and how the cell is, how these molecules operate in the cells, the functions of the cell. So Mm -hmm. that's the concentration. So the whole point of biology, when you, when we talk about biology, it's about the foundations of life. So biology 101, this is why it's important, Mm -hmm. It tells you the five characteristics to determine if an organism is a living organism, right? Mm -hmm. So 
with these five characteristics, everything builds around this, this concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have incorporated the understanding of science. Why? Because science is rooted in analysis. It's rooted in studying the nature and the behavior of the planet and things around you without human manipulation, right? Okay. So it's based on observation and fact, right? So I have taken my training in science to incorporate in my analysis of human behavior okay. and the difference between the sexes, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's let, let me let's let's expound upon that. So you say your background, do you have a degree in this? Did you work in it? Were you a scientist in a no. lab? Okay. Well, okay. So I have, I, I went to school and I'm only 18 hours away of actually getting a bachelor's in uh, cell and molecular biology. So I only basically have one semester left to finish that. So in that you are in the lab, you cannot get a degree or even have that many hours without being in the laboratory. So okay. I have separated proteins, right? I've used the centrifuge. I've done the calculations. I've been in the study. So it's, it's not the field that I chose to stay in. However, I have gained the perspective and the actual hands on um, things that I needed to do to understand how to analyze things in the scientific mm. world. Okay. So I have taken that, I've taken that knowledge that I have acquired and I never lost it. I took it into new fields. So going from cell and molecular biology, I also then transitioned into leadership in the military. So okay. now I have a background of understanding not only how to lead myself and how to lead others, but now I can see what characteristics are required for a person to be a leader. So mm. I have to possess these and then I have to analyze other people and say, do they have the characteristics, the traits or the qualities to possess leadership skills within them? Mm. Why is that important, Tanya? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's important because the narrative that's being pushed out in male and female relationships is that men are supposed to be the leaders, right. that they're the natural leaders, the providers and protectors. But when you look out into the world, you see nothing but chaos. Right. Well, I see that there is a problem. There is a problem because women, one, do not know men, and mm. two, they don't even know leadership. Mm. So women are not being able to make good choices in men because they're being led on total ignorance. They're mm. blind. They don't know what leadership is and they don't know what men, who men are. So mm. because of this, because of this, Tanya, yeah, and my life experiences and what I have acquired and what I've gone through learning learning these lessons through the school of hard knocks and mm. formal education i am a humanitarian before i'm anything okay and when i look online and i see women constantly crying mm. women being confused and all of these stories i keep hearing about how men doing these women i'm i'm looking at these sad posts for years in the marriage club yeah I have the answer to why women are experiencing the discordance that they're experiencing mm -hmm. in these relationships. And I can do one of two things. I can yeah. keep this knowledge keep to myself to yourself and sit or share back it. and watch people I can watch people be in pain, mm -hmm. or I can provide them the answer and give them freedom of choice. Mm. Give them freedom of choice through informed decision making. Okay. Well, you know what? Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me put a little applause on that. All right. So follow-up question. You said that you've done a lot of research. Um, tell us about some of this yes. research. Some of us are just meeting you for the first time. Others know you, but may, some may not know your scientific process or the research that you've done. Okay, so um, when you're doing research, first and foremost, you have to 
always go to through credible sources. And when you use statistical analysis, you know, it's mm -hmm. always about getting a sample, uh, a population size and being able to dig deep into what it is that you're trying to analyze. Um, yeah. And so when you take a sample population, um, it it's just an indicator, all right, of what may be going on over a bigger scale. So mm -hmm. the easiest way to talk about uh, statistics is use a, a coin, right? Okay. Heads, tails. If you flip the coin 10 times, right, it may land on heads like seven times and tails three times, right? But that's only because you flipped it 10 times. But the more you flip it, the closer it will get to its actual depiction of a 50 50 re relationship because it, you can flip it and it end up uh, on heads 50 percent of the time tails right. 50 percent of the time because right. it's one coin with two sides right <laughs> but to get a more accurate depiction of the the population you yeah. have to flip it enough times mm -hmm. so if you flip it 10 times it could come seven out of ten but if you flip it a thousand times yeah it's gonna look more close to 50 50. right so exactly you have to get a big enough sample size right to be able to analyze what it is that you're trying to analyze so when i look at society I need to make sure that I get credible research to back up my claims if I'm going to say something. Yeah. So the credible sources that I go to is I go to the government's website where all of the research papers are held, peer reviewed mm -hmm. studies. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is uh, the National Library of Medicine. I don't say any I don't let nothing come out of my mouth that I cannot substantiate through peer reviewed research, right? Yeah. And this is important that this is done because you do not want to add your own junk into, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What you're saying, because the manosphere has a habit of doing that. They Speak do about not it. substantiate any of their claims through any peer reviewed research, they're just talking out of emotion. And one of the things in, 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 in the public is that women are emotional and men are more logical. That narrative has to be destroyed. Yeah. And it's so easy for women to destroy it because the truth is on women's side. Yeah. The truth is not on men's side. The yeah. truth is on the yeah. side of the female. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, I didn't right? mean to interrupt so, you with applause. Go ahead. Let no, me it's cool. It's it's cool, <laughs> Tanya. Thank you. Um, but the truth is on the side of the woman. So it's real easy to go and get peer-reviewed research papers that back up the claims to support women. But the scientists know this. Everybody knows this who are running the globe. So there has been a concerted effort to keep women out of the knowledge of science, math, occult wisdom, to keep and sell them fantasies so that men, men's delusion can continue to be supported. Because when you tell a man the truth, it doesn't matter if you tell him his dick little. It doesn't matter if you tell him that he's broke. You cannot tell the man a, the truth about anything because he will come undone. Why is that? Why is the male's ego so fragile? There is a scientific reason for it. Mm. Oh, I missed. I lost my screen. Sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, Francella. I lost my screen for some reason. Let me get you back up here. Sorry. Go ahead. What's yes, the scientific reason that men become undone when they are confronted? Okay, so men's egos are very, very fragile because men will tell you this out of their own mouths. It's not something that I'm making up. All women have to do is pay attention and listen to men with the right ears. Have you heard men say, 
Our past don't matter as a man. Y'all past matter more as a woman. You know why? Because women are born with value. Women have to preserve their value. So this is the reason why her past matters. This is the reason why we need to know how many bodies you got, right? We need to know your past because we need to know that you preserve value. We, on the other hand, our past doesn't matter as men because we're born with no value. We have to build value mm -hmm. and we don't get our value don't come until around 30 or 40. 35 or 40 mm. men will tell you that they're born at the wall. Wait, what do you but mean? But women born don't at the hear wall? that <laughs> they born they, at the wall. They say women hit the wall. So that means you come out the womb running, right? Uh -huh. Like the, like, like the rabbit. And then when you get to a certain age, you just come into a brick wall where men don't want you no more. That's the rationale, right? Uh -huh. That's that's not coming from me. That's coming from men letting you know their struggle as as a man. We mm -hmm. are born with no value. We have to build value. Mm -hmm. The average male struggles to build this value. And so they depend on women to get their value built. Mm -hmm. Men heavily depend on women because they are codependent by nature. So there, when you get down into the biology of the difference between men and women, mm -hmm. what you're going to find out is something called sexual conflict. Okay. Sexual conflict, let me explain that. This manosphere red pill and this thing that men and women going back and forth with each other, y'all know that is what? The gender war, right? Okay. They know that is the gender war and they think that the gender war is some manufactured thing from the elites, the gender war, the black woman against the black man and all that we are, we, we heard it. But what people do not understand is that when you get down into the biology of the XX and the XY chromosomes, what you're going to find is what is called sexual conflict where male and female sexual purposes differ mm -hmm, they diverge. are in opposition of each other right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so women produce offspring by quality it's quality over quantity for right. the female right and right? for men it's and quantity right it's quantity Spread right the seed far and wide yes Absolutely. And so with so the earliest species on planet Earth were female. Mm -hmm. Female is the biological norm and the earliest species of female copied themselves asexually. Right. Mm -hmm. And so basically making clones of themselves, reproducing more exact copies. Well, in changing environments, you need genetic variation to ensure mm -hmm. survival. So later on down the line, males were produced, OK, mm -hmm. to carry extra genes yeah. for those for those environmental changes. OK. Mm -hmm. When women have daughters women pass down mitochondrial dna mm -hmm. mitochondrial dna is only passed down from mother to daughter and women are born with all of the eggs that they will ever use mm -hmm. and within those eggs if those eggs are girl babies the eggs are perpetual they they have a eternal line mm -hmm. it's an eternal line that never ends however when the male reproduces himself, he cannot exist unless he passes down a Y chromosome and he can only pass that Y chromosome down if sons. he copulates with a female. Yeah. He cannot do it on his own, which puts the male in a perpetual state of scarcity and survival because male fetuses are more fragile 
in the womb than females. Male sperm is more fragile. So from mm -hmm. conception into the grave, the male is fighting to survive. So when he gets here on planet Earth after going through all of the obstetric is issues that he can face in utero, he comes out and has more issues with survival. Mm -hmm. So men's psychology is hardwired yeah. for survival where women's psychology is more about existing and abundance oh you, so you have go ahead that's the that's that's our reminder to take a break so let me okay so listen so what we need to do for this break so i want you to do this too princella yes get up out of your seat Mm -hmm. move your hips squat stretch do something i know your makeup is looking all pretty and everything but what we're going to do yes. is we're going to take a, a movement break and when we come back we're going to read some of the cash apples from people who have sent them through um you want to drop your cash app so that people can send something through to you what is it sure. it's a uh, princella c oh okay Prince at princella well dollar sign princella c on cash app Yes, ma'am. Right. All right, wonderful. So the spelling of her name is in the title of the video as well as in the description. So let me just let me just get people geared up and then we uh, will come right back in three minutes. What was the last thing that you said before um, we were talking about males being wired for survival? Do you remember the yes, last thing that you said? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, males are wired for survival and scarcity and yeah. women are wired for existence and abundance. OK, perfect. So remember that thought, because we're going to be back in about three minutes. Give me just one moment. All right. So we're going to take a quick movement break right now because, you know, we're going to be sitting here for a few hours. So you can use this time to get up, go get a drink of water while you're getting up to get your drink of water. Move those hips, squat down stretch your arms, do something. Sitting is death. And so we want to promote life. So get up out of your seat and bust a groove. I'm going to put on some high, some, some high caliber music for you to be able to dance to. All right. So here we go. Listen, no matter what it is that you do, get up and do something.
my goodness. <laughs> Man, that was something else. I love that song. Where are you, Princella? Princella. I'm right here, baby. You, oh, you didn't come back out with the Hugh Hefner robe and everything? Oh, girl, get it. Get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Woo. Okay, so we are back from the break. Oh. That's good. I want you all to How tell you me take those breaks. Those, what those was, are really good. Those. I want you all to tell me what is it that you all did during the break. I saw Princella give a little, bust a little groove back there. I was doing some fast-paced yeah. electric slide. <laughs> that's, what I, yeah. that's what I was doing. <laughs> Oh, I want you all to tell me what you all got into. Whew. All right. So welcome. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back. I am talking with Princella, the queen maker, and she is dropping science on the nature of men, the things that she's learned and researched. And we were getting into um, into how she came upon the views that she that she has incorporated. Let me read the let me read the apples that have come in real quick. Let me just grab the first one and then we'll jump back into the broadcast. Whoo, my goodness, here we go. All right, so Tymesha sends five dollars and says, OMG, love this one. Bring ladies out microphone. All right, I'll kill you on that. I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. All right, so um, Princella, let's talk, let's talk. So the, um, the last thing that we were talking about before the break was you were talking about the nature of men coming or nature of boys coming out of the wombs that they're wired for fighting for survival and that women mm -hmm. are wired for, let's, let's, let's pick up where we left off. Yes, uh, so because the male has to struggle to survive because in so many different ways it's it's as if the uterus or the womb is trying to get rid of um what is different um in the womb uh -huh. so males have a lot of deficits that they have to struggle through yeah. and so when male when when a woman is pregnant with a male fetus the male child leaves y chromosomal dna yeah. scattered across the the mother's brain so that he can ensure that she gives more care to him than a daughter because girls are the stronger sex emotion mm -hmm. they have more emotional intelligence they are smarter they have less they have less deficiencies males have a lot of deficiencies and they need so much help and so their struggle for survival is stronger than the female so because the y chromosome is so it's so degenerate it's missing a lot of genes i i'm not i'm not i'm just i'm just saying what it is you know what i mean because these are facts they're facts the X chromosome has way more genes, thousands of genes compared to the only a few hundred genes on the Y chromosome, which makes males have a lot more deficiencies than females and makes them more codependent. So men or male children are born in scarcity and survival. Scarcity and survival are the two um, staples of men that make them who they are. Females, on the other hand, they're born in abundance and they're born to exist. The female does not have to fight to pass her genes along. She is born in sexual abundance. She's born in sexual abundance. The male is born in sexual scarcity. So in a natural environment, the average male would not make it because he would have to be the fittest in order to survive, to pass his genes along. The, the majority of them don't make it. So in this system that has been created, 
patriarchy, the male, the even the most unfit male has been given access to a woman to pass his genes along. But men, you need to understand that they move to pass their genes along in abundance. So it's not quality versus quantity. It's mm -hmm. quantity over quant quality for them. So one woman ain't enough, even if you give him one woman. And the reason why you end up with men who unalive women and they say, if I can't have you, no one can, because males operate in scarcity and women are a resource to men. Mm. Women and sex is just like food and water to men. So when women are free, it bothers men because mm. they live in territory, scarcity, right? They, um, aggression, all of these things, conquering, right? Mm. So there is a their their existences are diametrically opposed to each other, mm. which mm. creates the conflict. So if you're if I want you to look at my hands, if the natural flow is going this way, in order to make it go the other way around, you have to force it inward heterosexual relationships and i'm not talking about just sex i'm talking about literally maintaining a full relationship mental emotional spiritual sexual responsibility all that mm -hmm. in order to maintain this both parties have to go against their nature mm -hmm. men are tr are being forced to be monogamous in this unnatural system they are forced to be in the house and they don't want to be in the house they are forced to help the woman carry responsibilities that were meant for women to carry and he can't do it and he's upset about it and it's he's struggling trying to do it so he's having to try to deal with women's emotions when they can't even deal with their own. Mm, now, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. Upset. I need to give an applause on that right there. I need to give an yes. applause on that, girl. Yes, absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Men will get upset of what I'm saying because, again, the truth does not support their existence and men depend on a delusion. Men depend on women living in a delusional state to continue to to get access to women. Mm -hmm. Because if women knew the truth, a lot of women would not be dealing with men, okay? Mm -hmm. But men do not even know how they feel in their own body. And yeah. they don't even have the words to tell you how they feel in their own body. The male's emotional vocabulary is, it's, it's, it's uh -oh. an impediment. Oh, he might goodness. only have four or five words to describe the the feeling. The male really believes that the only emotions are happy, sad, and mad, or something like that. Happy, sad, and mad. Men are more likely to be affected by a deficit called alexithemia. Alexithemia impacts men way more than it impacts women. And what is alexithemia? Alexithemia is a lack of an emotional vocabulary. Mm. Men can't even tell you how they feel. And they're being forced in relationship dynamics where women are trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip and get him to emotionally connect with her when he doesn't even know his own his own emotion or emotional state. So, uh, Tanya, whatever you just pulled up to alexithemia, if you could just read it for everybody, whatever okay. it, it describes. Sure, sure. Let me put this right here and let's get the. <sighs> there we go. Give me one second. Let me, I need to. Once we went live, the, the screens changed 
So it was it just became so here we go. Alexithemia is not a condition in its own right, but rather an inability to identify and describe emotions. People with alexithemia have difficulties recognizing and communicating their own emotions, and they also struggle to recognize and respond to emotions in others. That sounds like men to me. That sounds like men to me. Yes. For sure. mm -hmm. And more men, and more men are affected <clears throat> with that or by that than females and women have been there has been a systematic effort to keep women out of the knowledge of male makeup women mm -hmm. don't know this so because women don't know this women are putting a lot of pressure on men trying to get men to do something that they really are incapable of doing okay this is what mm -hmm. women don't understand so not only are they they trying to get bl squeeze blood out of a turnip by doing that, women also do not know the effects that testosterone has on male behavior. Mm. Testosterone is is the chemical that is responsible for aggression, mm -hmm. dominance, competition, mm -hmm. and verbal aggressiveness in men. It is responsible for that. It is the sole chemical. Testosterone is concentrated in the male bloodstream 15 times more than that of a woman. And what they also don't know is that your prefrontal cortex, right, that sits at the front of mm -hmm. your brain, in there is housed the orbital frontal cortex. The orbital frontal cortex is basically your brake pedal. Like in your car when you're speeding or you're driving and then mm -hmm. you press your brakes so that you don't crash into a wall. Mm -hmm. That's the orbital frontal cortex is your brake pedal. Okay. So the uh, the amygdala is responsible for emotions. And one of the key emotions of the amygdala is anger. Men are not emotionally expressive. They are emotionally reactive. Now, the the larger the orbital frontal cortex is the brake pedal in relation to the amygdala will give a person more control over their emotions mm -hmm. so when you compare the volume size or the volume of the orbital frontal cortex just by men and women alike what you find out is that women's orbital frontal cortex is larger than men's orbital frontal cortex mm -hmm. in relation to their amygdala and in relation to each to, other. I need to write that down while you're going on. Yes. Continue. Yes. Okay. So once you realize that and you understand the effects that testosterone has on the amygdala, when testosterone, ri when testosterone levels rise, mm -hmm. what testosterone doing, what testosterone is doing is knocking on the door of the amygdala. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry. I'm getting angry. This is where the incredible Hulk comes in, right? Mm -hmm. You're making me angry, right? This is testosterone knocking on the amygdala, okay? Mm -hmm. When women keep talking and messing with men, their testosterone levels continue to rise until it cuts off the brake pedal. It shuts off the brake pedal's job, and men become impulsive. And so if you make a man mad enough, raising his testosterone levels, mm -hmm. men can black out, right? And that's them going, um, cutting off that brake pedal. Mm -hmm. And in order to counteract as an antag antagonistic effect on testosterone, you need serotonin and you need cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that acts as an antagonizer to testosterone and cortisol is a stress hormone so what does this tell you that men function better in stressful environments women do not function this way so if if men are more affected by alexithemia than women where they lack an emotional vocabulary and they're more emotionally 
reactive and then the system that they're living in that they're trying to domesticate men in put men in a stoic mentality where they are ashamed of expressing their emotions men begin to bottle up these emotions and then when women who are totally ignorant of male makeup come why you don't talk to me why you don't express your emotions she don't even know that she making him mad she don't even know that she's about to get this dude to and this is why men keep saying y'all need to keep y'all mouth closed but they the women don't know why mm. and so what i teach women is the full nature of a man and who he is at his core and why you experience what you experience because once i give you all the information what i'm giving these women is freedom of choice People like to call me a lesbian cult leader because the messenger has chosen to date women after I learned all this. It wasn't until I learned all this and then I wrote my book, 41 Shades of Men, The Pursuit to Subdue and Use You, that I say, you know what? I don't got to deal with this. I got the freedom to choose the life that I want. And so what I do is I give women the ability to think, the ability to rationalize, and the ability to choose. Mm -hmm. So I don't tell women that they have to be lesbians, but what I do tell them is one, you got four options. You have four choices, right? You got the freedom of choice with the ability to think through these choices, right? Yeah. But number two, you, everything that you believed about men was a lie. And what you're looking for in men are the characteristics of a woman. You want men to be providers, protectors, emotionally, emotionally expressive, emotionally intelligent. These are all the character traits of a woman. And if you keep begging men to be women and believing that you have some sexual power or you just the baddest person that you can turn <laughs> any man, you can fix any man, you're going to continue to hurt yourself. Men will never be women and you need to stop trying to force them to be. If you want to be with a man, you need to accept the man for exactly who he is at his core. Stop trying to change them. Stop trying to make them be something that they're not. Because at the end of the day, if what you're wanting is a woman in a male frame, and if you want that, then you either need to date a trans man or you need to get you a woman. But you need to stop trying to force men to be women. So one, after I done told you who men are and I done proved it to you through science, you can still date them right you can put you you can know the scientific makeup of them you can know all 41 shades of these men you can know everything about them their hygiene their lying where they stick in their penis whether you know it or don't know it and open yourself up to risk you have that choice but you're not going to choose it out of being dumb and blind. You going to choose it because you know better. And once you do that, whatever you get out of that is all on you. Don't come back telling me nothing. I don't want to hear it because if you do, I'm going to charge you a thousand dollars for one hour for you to tell me why your feelings hurt. Cause I really don't give a damn. And I'm going to make you pay for my time. Number two, you can be celibate. Ain't nobody told you that you that you have to give your sexual energy to anybody. You can, as a woman who, who I have freed, you have the ability to do what the fuck you want to do. So if you want to date men, date them. If you want to be celibate, be celibate. If you want to get a bunch of toys and be a dominatrix and be on OnlyFans playing with yourself so the world can see you playing with your toys, girl, do you get all of them. And don't nobody ever touch you but yourself. Cool. Or you could get a woman. Either one of these choices, 
you are free to make in your power because the, the feminine is the power source. The woman is God. The divine is the feminine. And the, that bitch can do whatever the hell she want to do. So if she want to have a bunch of women, she can. If she want to have a bunch of pool boys, she can. If she don't want nobody to touch her, she ain't got to let nobody touch her. Or she can fuck herself. Those are all the power choices that she all got to right. make. But for me, <laughs> I choose women. Okay, very interesting. All right, well, you know what? Thank you so much for sharing that. That yeah. was really good. So I wanted to, um, I just wanted to check on some terms and I want to make sure that I have them right. So you were talking about the orbital lobe that's in the prefrontal cortex. Is that what you said? Yeah, the orbital frontal cortex is orbito. O-R-I, uh, O-R-B-I-T-O. Orbito oh, frontal. Orbito. I thought you said orbital. Okay, orbito. Orbital, okay, orbital so the, frontal cortex. Okay, orbital frontal cortex. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And which one of the which part of the brain did you say was the was the brake pedal? Did you say that was the orbital lobe or was no, that the, or, the orbital the orbital frontal cortex? It's housed in the prefrontal cortex, and that that particular part of the brain is mm -hmm. the brake pedal. It controls okay. it, it controls impulse, and it can okay. get shut off. It doesn't get shut off in women though. It only gets shut off in men. Okay. And okay. testosterone is what shuts it off. Okay. Okay. And then you said that we need serotonin and cortisol in order to, um, to mitigate emotional outbursts. Is that what you said? Just repeat yeah, that to, part. To, okay. to, to mitigate, well, to act antagonistically against testosterone. Right. Okay. So instead, instead of the orbital frontal cortex doing the job, since it gets cut off and testosterone is the one that cut it off, there has to be something else to bring testosterone down to get people to to get these males to to control their behavior right mm -hmm. so it would be serotonin and cortisol okay. that would do that okay perfect perfect i'm going to um look that up after we get off because that sounds very interesting where was it that you came upon that particular information about the brain because i told my base that the brain like neuropsychology is something that i want to study so where did mm -hmm. you come across this information about the 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 orbital frontal cortex and all that okay so when i when i do all i do all of my observation and i come to my conclusions first before mm -hmm. i look for the studies so once i come to the conclusion i go to i work backwards I go to the national, I go to PubMed. Okay. And then I type in what I'm looking for because okay. I know these scientists have done research on it. Okay. I know they got the answers. So once I say this is what it is, I just go find a, a peer review research and lo and behold, it's right there to back up what I have already come to the conclusion of, right? So okay. you can go to PubMed literally to find anything. If okay. you want to find out how uh, breakups uh, impact men's health, why men can't live alone, and what emotional effect, you can go find that. You can go find out um, how uh, semen affects males, uh, behavior or their body if they don't release it you can find anything that you can think of that you see as a problem and i promise you there is mm. a research paper out there on it interesting perfect i'm glad you said that because i was oh, i was also because a few years ago i did some one of the things that you said is absolutely correct that in the manosphere they're not they're not researching what they're saying they're just saying it and it was this meme that was going viral about how when a woman has intercourse that the male DNA is left inside of her womb, right? And so mm -hmm. I went and I did some research on that, but that's false. When she has intercourse, his DNA is not left in her womb. The DNA that is, the, the male DNA that is found in a woman's womb comes from the boy children that she's given birth to as well as, the, as, well as her father. So it's father and son DNA that is left inside of her. You said earlier that 
DNA that the male child de- le- leaves his Y chromosome DNA on her brain. Can you state that again yes. so that I could just look this up? Yeah, yeah. It, it, you said it right. When women are pregnant with male fetuses, mm-hmm. they leave Y chromosomal DNA scattered across the brain. So if you write that, all you got to do is type it in Google and okay. you'll find okay. it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I was quoting you correctly and so that other people can look into this as well. Because the, the stuff that you're saying is fascinating. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that we had a chance to have this conversation. Let's, uh, mm-hmm. let's talk really quickly. Let me... Uh-huh. I typically on my show, anytime I reference anything, I pull the studies up directly for my audience and I post it on the screen so they can see it and they can go do their research on their own. But, um, you know, so you can if you want to look that one up, you can also look up. You can go look up Sebastian Kramer's work, Sebastian Kramer, um, fragile male. You can look up testosterone and aggression. Okay, Uh, test. Yeah, testosterone and aggression. You can look up um, how men do not see women as men do not see women as um, human, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How they function from the left side of their brain and how they see women as tools. Mm -hmm. All of the research is there, right? Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, You know, um, the crazy part about this, right? The crazy part about this and this conversation is that sooner or later, I'd say most women, if, they, if they're paying attention, sooner or later, most women are going to come to some of these conclusions after mm-hmm. being frustrated for so long. And when I hear these men talking about how they're going to get younger and younger women, so part of the, part of the thing that the issue that people have with you is they say you're a lesbian, you hate, wit, you hate men, this, that, and the other, you like women, et cetera, right? And part mm-hmm. of what they say about me is that I hate men, that I didn't have a father, that this, that, and the other, right? Mm-hmm. And my mother died when I was a teenager, so my father did the, the tail end of the, of, of the rearing on, mm-hmm. on me and my siblings. And so my father is very much present in my life and a, and a, and a big influence as well as you know, my other family members, et cetera. Right. Mm-hmm. And so for you, I can see how they're like, oh, well, you're saying this because you're a lesbian. You like women. However, mm-hmm. I like men and I still have come to some of these conclusions because it's like when you see male nature and when you see how they get down. So part of what it is that I do is I speak to younger women and the men come out and they're like, oh, why are you trying to taint these younger women? against what it is that we're doing and it's because the younger women don't know but live long enough live long right. enough and you and you shall find out so i want to dive back into some of what you were saying early 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 in the in the broadcast mm-hmm. you were saying that you were married yes that you have that you've dated men etc but you mm-hmm. came to the conclusion that you were not going to find what it is that you needed in a man when did you come to that conclusion? Was that during your marriage, after the marriage, during dating? Oh, this was last year. And actually, oh. this was December twenty. This was December twenty twenty two, right? So I had been for twenty five years. I have, I'm, I, I believe in a higher power. Okay, mm-hmm. and I believe that we are spirits or souls here having, having a human, a human journey. We're on a mm-hmm. human journey. And I believe that we all have a purpose. So planet Earth to me is a training ground. Mm -hmm. So for my purpose, which is what I'm doing right now, which is to free women, I believe the creator sent me through a training phase for 25 Mm -hmm. years dealing with men. I have been a tomboy my entire life. I, I grew up as a tomboy and I've been around men in, in, in a multitude of capacities. Mm-hmm. I've been with them as friends. I've been with them in male dominated industries as their coworkers. Mm-hmm. I have led them uh, because my platoon was mostly men. And mm-hmm. so I was in charge of men. Um, I was in charge of myself, but I've, I've been with them and in relationships and I've observed them online and men have contacted me to get help 
over <laughs> the years and it for advice. So mm -hmm. when I tell you I know men, I know them, not just being in relationships. And I know that I'm one hell of a person. I know that I'm one hell of a person and I don't have conflicts with people. Mm -hmm. And anytime I'm dealing with people socially or whether it's business or whatever, I'm a delight to be around. Oh, I, I, I'm so? a delight to be. Oh. Yes, I'm a delight oh. to be around. And everything that men have said that a woman needed to do to be with them, I was. I was the nurturer, right? You know, I was I'm really good at giving massages, right? I, I, I did the whole nine yards. I'm a hell of a cook too, right? Mm. I used to cook online, right? I, oh. I, I used to be on Facebook. People would see my meals and everything. I was doing all that. And on top of that, I had talent outside of this world, right? Oh. Very intelligent, the whole nine. Yeah. But I've always been entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to work with guys and partner in business. And guess what? Guess who did the manipulating and the plan? them guess who end up trying to having to do all the work myself right mm. and so over the years after being sexually assaulted after oh. having a man pull a gun on me after being robbed by men after being taken for money after being uh um raped in 2016 and getting pregnant from that rape thank goodness yeah and the guy tells me this is and here's the thing all this happened during my pro black phase during oh my, my pro black listen, phase listen listen it is time for us to take a quick break real quick we are going to come back on this exact thing that you're saying so i want you to remember the last thing that we talked about where you were talking about this journey and the capacities in which you knew and interacted with men and then the assault the pregnancy and then that's where we stopped and then the pro black phase oh my yeah. goodness this is very deep thank you so much for sharing that with us mm -hmm. let me just get people prepped for um for the break wow you know what thank you all so much for coming out thank you for being a part of this broadcast if you don't know right now we are talking with princella the queen maker and she is an up-and-coming youtube phenom where she has hit the hit the inter interwebs with, you know, with talks of the research that she's done into men, the the different ways in which she knows and is expounding upon their nature. She's written a book. Princella, promote your book real quick here. Yes. All right. So I have a book that I've written called The Game, 41 Shades of Men, The Pursuit to Subdue and Use You. After the life experiences that I've had, I had to figure out it's not me because I've done all the self work. I've done all the, and it's still the same issue. Yes, what yes, yes. is the problem? It ain't me at this point. And after the last guy that I dealt with, who actually was a seven figure guy, it dawned on me. These dudes, they're all the same, no matter what age, financial uh bracket tax bracket they're in it don't matter how they look it does not matter and that's when all of the wisdom came together mm -hmm. and it's like you know what men are consumers and women are the resource that they consume and men approach women for 41 different reasons and if women want to know who they're dealing with all they got to do is see who they are in one of these 41 shades and i guarantee you you'll find them in here so yeah the game 41 shades of men the pursuit to subdue and use you yes and her link to the book is in the description and when we come back we're going to get back into the portion of the broadcast where she was opening up and and follow up with that right now we need to take a movement break so i'm encouraging everyone to get up and move I'm going to put on some some high paced music for you all. So get up and bust a groove, move your hips, bend down, touch the ground, 
<laughs> scrub the ground, bend down low, stand up, do some squats, stretch, run in place, anything, jumping jacks, whatever the case may be, do that. And we're going to be back in three minutes. So you have three minutes to move because sitting is death. And we have been, we've been on this broadcast for over an hour. And so make sure that you get up right now and get some movement in. All right. Thank you all so much. We're going to be back in three and three. Priscilla, if you don't stop, I'm going to put that on camera. <laughs> She's on behind the scenes giving a show that... Is, 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 it may not be for YouTube. It might be for the After Dark programs. All right, we're going to be right back. <laughs> Even I got caught up in that break. Oh my goodness. When I went to my college reunion years ago, there was a guy from Chicago that taught me this style of dancing. I don't know if everybody in Chicago does this, but it's pretty much a hop like this, left and right. That's what I was doing behind the scenes. Then I started squatting down low. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All right, so we are back, we're back. And today we're talking with we're talking with Princella, the queen maker, and we were, we were, you know, there were some people that were talking about why I took the break when I took the break. And what happens is if we don't take the break at the break times, 
then it kind of gets lost and then we just don't get the break. So it's important for us to be able to give us give ourselves those reminders to do a pattern interrupt, to get up, to move. And we're going to come right back into it. Don't worry. We're, we're getting right back into it right now. So let me um, let me check the apples real quick. I appreciate you all for sending them through. Um, let's grab this. Um, ooh, I'm enjoying the movement breaks. How are you all feeling about it? The reminder to move. Well, how, how are you all handling that? Are you all moving behind the scenes? If you are, let me know what you've done. All right. So Essence has sent through. Um, oh, no. Tymesha has. Oh, no. We read that one before. So Essence has sent in five dollars and says this collab is everything. Thank you, Essence. I appreciate that. You know what, Princella, we need to talk about what it took for us to be able to get together and do this collab because it took it took a lot of months and, you know, it took a lot. So we'll talk about that in a moment. James sends three dollars and says, Queen Maker, fuck nigga slayer. Is that one of your yeah. sayings, Princella? Is that how you be talking? Uh-uh, no, no, that's how, that's how James refer to me. <laughs> oh, Okay. Lisa Roxanne sends three dollars. Thank you, Lisa Roxanne. And Miss Lady sends five and says, "This is the collab I've been waiting for." Oh, that's so great. You know what? I'm glad that you said that because there are some people that didn't want the collab to happen. Cinnamon Wolf sends in forty dollars and says, "For you both." So I'm gonna send you twenty dollars. So anybody that sends something through on the Cash App for Princella. And I, or for Princella, I'm going to send it to her. So I'll wait until the end of the broadcast to be able to get all of it over to you. Okay? All right. All right. So thank you, Cinnamon. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate I appreciate that. Um, and it looks like we got all of them there. So right now we are speaking with the infamous, the the undisputed. Well, some people dispute you, but... We are speaking with Princella, the queen maker. Welcome back in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So right before the break, you remember what was the last thing we were talking about? We were talking about um, the assault that you had that resulted in a pregnancy. And you were saying, thank goodness. And then that's when the alarm came off for us to, to take our break. And so you were saying that it did not result in. And so I'm going to allow you the moments to continue. Yeah. Uh, so thank goodness that um, they didn't have this abortion ban back then because mm. that would have not been a good thing. Right. Mm. Um, so, you know, and this was during my pro black phase. Right. And so what men expect women to do is endure a bunch of trauma, endure yeah. a bunch of pain that they are causing, and then get out here and be like, black men, I just love black men so much. They do no wrong and, and yeah. pro-black while you cover up the yeah. brutality yeah. that they are doing to you. This is what men expect. And if you don't do that and you speak your experiences, the first thing they want to say is you hurt. And in order mm -hmm. to prove to them that you're not hurt, you need to speak holier than thou of them and never utter the words of something that somebody has done to you. And if you do utter it, take the blame for it and mm -hmm. then praise them. That's what they expect. Well. I was wrong. I should I should have never did this. I should have never did that. And I attracted him. This is what they want you to speak into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking that because let me tell you something. The only reason that women get the stuff that they get out of men is because women believe something about men mm. that's not true that gives her rose colored glasses that inadvertently puts her into dangerous situations mm -hmm. that's the problem it's yeah. not necessarily the woman herself unless she has some severe codependent ways and she believes that the only way that she can get uh, this love or her codependent needs met is if she turns to a male mm -hmm. and then she attracts men who are looking for somebody with weaknesses. Yes. Right. So this so women being out of knowledge and having codependent ways is what attracts these men and it 
if you heal yourself and you become like me, these <laughs> men will leave. They will get away. And that's a blessing, ladies. A man leaving you alone is a blessing. It is yeah. not a red flag. A man that's approaching women in droves, they all sense something lacking in that woman that they feel that they can use to manipulate her with, right? That's that's what women need to understand. So if women shifted their perception on men, a lot of women's lives would be a whole lot better than what it is. Because one of the patterns that I noticed in my life is that when I didn't have no dude in my life, my life was good. Listen, hold on, hold on. I need to put up an applause on that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, listen, because we see them all over the internet talking about that's why you single, you're going to be single. And I'm like, don't, don't threaten me with a good time. What are you talking about? Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. The first dude that played me in my early 20s. Now, do you know that these guys like to pursue younger women? because mm -hmm. they're more impressionable, right? Yeah. Which means that it's easier to manipulate those. And if there's an age gap, a man who's been around longer, he has more experience and more yeah. game that he can run on somebody and on and on an unsuspecting victim. Yeah. So as a as a car salesman who was at the top of her game working around men who had been in the game for 30 years, one of the one of the sayings amongst men in the car industry, it's a new fool born every day. Mm. It's a new fool born every day. And you make the you make your most you make the most money on people who don't know how to buy cars. Ignorance oh. is not bliss. Ignorance is dangerous, right? Mm. And so I watched a man one of my my co-workers it was an old man who came into the dealership one time and he had a paid off vehicle mm. and he wanted to trade it in and to make a long story short the man didn't know anything oh, yeah. he was just wanting to trade in his truck for a new truck the salesman who took that truck in on trade held $19,000 worth of equity and kept it for himself. Wait. What does, that, what does that mean? He shorted the man $19,000 of what his car was really worth. Mm. And the, the old man did not know any better, right? Mm. Ignorance is not bliss. And what I provide women with is clarity because women are moving in total ignorance when they're dealing with men. They don't know men, but I do. And mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you what men ain't going to teach you about them. And this is the reason why they don't like me. So they have to figure out any kind of way to get women to stop listening to me. So they'll say, oh, she a lesbian. Oh, she don't have no man. Oh, she hurt. Anything to, to prevent their resource from drying up. Mm -hmm. Men need women like they need air and like they need water. And that if you restrict the resources, Food, air, water, and women, these men will go crazy, so they need women to stay in delusion land and continue to believe these lies about them. So you don't want to be the old man walking into the dealership and getting your car stolen and, and losing $19,000 on your car that should have been in your pocket. Mm, right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I, I prevent women from going through this. But um, I took, I, yes, ladies. I got knocked upside my motherfucking head for 25 years dealing with men. And I, you don't have to experience what I experienced. The first dude to run game on me was a guy from the nation of Islam, right? In, the, in, in this, in this pro-black stuff. To make a long story short, this dude took my student loan money by running game. And what is that? Support your man, right? 
build him up, right? This, this, they, they're supposed to be the ones you trust. But then when you trust these dudes and when you get on their program and then you get screwed over, who they want to blame? They want to blame you, right? They want to blame you. So ladies, since you are always at fault, no matter what you do, you damned if you do and damned if you don't, girl, I'm telling you fucking don't. Mm. Oh my. Stand up for yourself. So to make a long story short in that, I got hit for 20, I got hit for 40 grand. $40,000 I got hit for, right? Of your student loan money? Yes, yes, okay. Mm. And I ended up living, uh, basically being homeless after that, right? I dealt with men and tried to help them with business. And because of their jealousy, because I have work ethic, they, they were feeling insecure because they couldn't do what I was doing. And as a result of their anger and jealousy of me, they, what, attacked me right put their hands on me Wait, okay what so yes at so your one, job no at, at at the domicile right because oh. so i had this one guy we were supposed to be working together so what what had happened this was after the guy had took a lot of money from me and so now i'm in this interim period where i'm living in an apartment and i need assistance to keep the apartment going so I get a roommate. And this roommate decided that he wanted to do a business. Hey, let's put a business together. Well, I'm the, I'm, I'm, I got a lot of executive skills. I have a lot mm -hmm. of clerical skills. So I put the business plan together to push what he wanted to do. I Instead of me being the head, I took the position of being the support like I did for every situation I've been in. I've always been the support letting the male lead as a result of doing that he got jealous and angry so he would say stuff like this he would see me putting some stuff together and i say i did this oh you you must think i'm stupid or something you must think i'm stupid what you mean i think you stupid right you must think you stupid so i'm not the type of person tanya i don't like conflict Mm, I why. disengage from conflict. Mm -hmm. So I don't argue with men. I don't argue with people. Mm. So he got into an argument with me one day and I said, I wasn't going to argue with him. So I locked myself in the room and he broke in the room to put his hands on me. The neighbors called the police, right? Okay. And so this is, this is, where I ended up leaving Shreveport and moved to Houston, Texas. Okay. Mm. Right. When I got to Houston, Texas, I found myself in a very similar situation. Very similar. Same damn thing. I'm selling products. I meet this guy. He wants to do a business because he meets me doing door to door sales. He lives across the street from my brother same exact thing i put a business plan for him together he wants to do this this blues show brand new in houston i started linking up with everybody in houston i started linking up with the musicians i, I get the place i put the whole thing together he's supposed to be funding it guess what halfway into it i find out that the reason that you're doing this is because you got beef with people in the city and you trying to showboat on them. And so now, because I'm doing all the work, you feel like everybody's communicating with me and they don't see you. So now you're mad at me because you feel like I'm trying to take over your project. So it's the same exact thing. I'm working in his office and because he stays across the street from my brother. So I'm over there working in his office, putting some stuff together, trying to get the, um, the artist to come, getting them paid and everything. He comes to start an argument with me. And I say, I'm not going to start no argument. I'm not arguing with, I go in one of the rooms lock myself in the room to get away from him he breaks in the room too and comes and grabs me by my throat and slams me in the shower i'm like this ain't me this is not me 
Hold on, hold on. And trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. Yeah. Trigger warning. Yeah, this ain't me. Ain't no way somebody finna blame me for these males' behavior. Now, at 12, I was raped. This, this is this is the pattern of life for me dealing with men, just in relationships now. Let's not talk about friendships where and coworkers. I'm working, I'm in the military, male-dominated industry, right? I watched my first sergeant get demoted, right? I watched my first sergeant get demoted because he was having relations with a enlisted soldier, a private, which is totally against ethics, but he's married, married oh. man. I watched this happen. A friend of mine at the time who was a soldier in my unit who used to come to my house and ride in my car and we used to go to drill together. Hmm. Tell me why he's serving life in prison right now because of his extreme codependency where this woman that he was dealing with decided to break up with him and he stalks her at her job this dude used to ride in my car he stalks her at her job do and people need a trigger warning right now trigger, yeah trigger warning stalks her at her job follows her home at 4 30 in the morning because she worked at the casino this woman her son was eight years old at the time he jumped out and he ambushed her and wow. slit her throat this dude used to ride in my car, right? Then there was a guy that used to be in a rap group that I rapped in who once upon a time tried to pressure me for sex and I told him no. And he didn't take it. He, he wasn't too happy about it when I told him no, but clearly over the years, people kept telling him no over and over. The last chick that told him no, he raped her and he chopped her body up and threw it in the river something is not right about these men okay then i had a dude try to ask me for sex right and i told him no we playing dominoes and he pulls out a gun and put it on the table and tell me i could take it if i want to Take right? what? The gun or the, the game? No. He asked me for sex and I turned him down. And oh, when I said, said no, he, he pulled could... out a gun. Oh, yes. Man. And put it on my table and told me that, hey, I can take it if I want to. Right. These are the experiences that I've had with men in and out of relationships, being in proximity with them while I'm working at the gas station, not the gas station. Well, I'll, I'll come back to the gas station. When I'm working at the car lot, right? Yeah. I'm one of the only women, you know, that's hanging around the guys, right? The fellas, because I'm, I'm out selling them, right? Mm -hmm. I'm out selling them. So I'm one of the big dogs in the car, at, at the car industry. And one day we are all in a group. And I'm the only woman in there because I'm a tomboy and I got a strong work ethic. A lot of, a lot of men look at me as one of them. They accept me in their groups and they talk to me like I'm one of them. So one day it's probably about eight, eight of us, eight to 10 of us in this group standing outside. Some of them are smoking. The manager's talking. He was my manager. We all just sitting there. And the manager just starts saying, yeah, yeah, man, shit. When my wife leave the house, man, I be fucking her knees, man. That shit, man. It, yes, I know men, baby. I know men. One of my, one of the employees, he would come and tell me. He, ha he was married. He was married. He would come up and tell me, hey. I remember he came and said, I just got finished fucking the, the, the receptionist. And they left. They had to get make ready to clean out the car, the one of the brand new cars, because he left, he ejaculated in the car and stained the seats. So he had to have one of the make ready. But you come, this is men, right? This is men. And so men who do not know that I have 
the knowledge on them, they try to gaslight as if I don't know them. I know them in and out of the 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 facade that they want to push. Right. So this is years worth this. I mean, this is years worth of data. Right. I had a dude try to I had a dude who was supposed to be my friend set me up for two thousand dollars. How he ran game on me with that. Right. He's supposed to be my friend. He's supposed to be selling me a computer. He builds a friendship with me just to set me up to take some money to sell me the idea of him selling me a computer. Once I caught on, the nigga never was selling me a computer. He just took my money. Right. Yeah. And then he tried to set me up to take an even larger amount. But by the time he tried to set me, I already figured out your game. Right. So these are the experiences that I've had with men. So now I have to ask, this is what men want women to do. When you experience a series yeah. of situations like this, what men want women to do is to say, you're the problem. You're attracted that like attracts like you dirty, they're dirty. It's your fault. This is what they, they So they want to quote unquote blame the victim, but that's not how you analyze a situation. You analyze situations based on patterns. So what they don't realize is after every last one of those things, I never just jumped into relationships back to back to back. No, I did some self work. I did some introspection. I changed some thoughts. I changed a lot. And every time I changed, the men's behaviors did not change. I change, but the male's behaviors do not change. That's real interesting. So after the last two guys that I dealt with, and this was 2021, mm. after that, one of them was a friend. One of them I had a, I was dating for a little bit. One of them was a friend. One of them I was dating for a little bit. The friend tried to set me up over a period of five years to try to take some money from me. He set me up for a period of five years to try to run a hustle on me. And in the end, it backfired on him. And luckily, I figured it out and caught him before it actually happened. Right. And so in, I ended up cutting him off. But then the guy that was making seven figures you're old baby when i tell you i done dated these suckers from the cradle to the damn grave my my <laughs> i done dated them in every tax bracket okay mm -hmm. i have dated them in every age group and the results are still the same okay so this guy, you got your own business. You're old as hell. You should probably be dying in the next five you years. You know something? You that that's old. so inappropriate. <laughs> but 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 it's the, it's the truth. That nigga was picking cotton. That nigga has been around since people was picking cotton. So when I tell you he old, he old. Okay. All right. All right. So right. So that nigga had two toes in the grave, and he had his own money, <laughs> and. You have your own business and your ego is still fragile and you're in competition with a little 30 something year old chick and you're flaming so bad that you're willing to sabotage your own company to try to get at me. Mm. Okay. Okay. Something is wrong at this point. It ain't me at this point. It ain't me. What the fuck is wrong with men? Or then Ryan, I hold sit. on. Let's 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 expound upon that right there. Let's yeah. expound upon that. So, two different things, right? Um, yeah. One, you are an amazing storyteller. Thank you for for blessing us with these anecdotes because they definitely do paint a a picture. And it's funny because a a, a few weeks ago I was talking to my base and I was talking about writing a book about these experiences because there's so many women who have had similar experiences when i ended up living in my car it was because i'd lent a male friend money a male friend who makes 
hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. But when it came time to pay me back, you know, this is how I ended up living in my car. And I had a roommate too. I was one, I was, I was Tanya TKO at that time too. I had a, a male roommate who had his, this is when I learned like how these people are like, oh, the Pookies and the Ray Rays are the, are the bad ones. When I had these issues with this, this white collar worker male roommate, it was a Pookie slash Ray Ray who kept me safe in that situation. And I realized that a lot of these Pookies and Ray Rays are mama's boys and they love women you know, mm -hmm. versus these men who are disempowered in their jobs and looking to, to take it out on women. So that story that you told about the old timer with the, with the truck trading it in and losing $20,000 worth of equity just about. And it, it reminds me of how these people will prey on the weak, the mm -hmm. young, the, the, the ignorant, the financially less capable, those who don't know, et cetera, et cetera. So I appreciate you telling those stories. They definitely paint a huge picture. Question for you, though, about whether or not we attract experiences, because I am of the belief that we do attract certain experiences into our lives, not because we're to blame, but because yeah. there's a higher... They are, they are like interstellar. They are, they are fabrics of the multiverse that are at play. And like your experiences brought you into the awareness that you are now creating the content that you're creating. And everybody's experience has, it's either been a blessing or a lesson so that we can be able to move differently, so that we can know something different, so that we can rise into our calling, so that we can gain some some knowledge. I would love to hash it up with you on that point one day, because I definitely believe that as energetic beings, their experiences, like even like my mother dying, I believe that me as a, as a spirit having a human experience that I incarnated mm -hmm. into a life where that mm -hmm. existed. Even the, um, the, the, look, this video is not going to be monetized with all the words and trigger warnings, but even the molestation that I faced as a child, that these experiences came into my life and have had an impact on creating who it is that I am now, the patterns that have come up for, for purview, like in my life, the pattern that has come up over and over again is the lack of closure. And so mm -hmm. for me, the, the molestation, my mother dying while I was away at college, I never even got a chance to say bye to my mother. I hadn't seen her in months. And then she ended up, she was, she was dead. The next time I saw her, the, what I saw in the coffin was not my mother, you know, right. so the patterns over and over of the lack of closure and how do I move on without that closure. So that's been something right. that's come up for me as a, as a, as a spirit, having a human experience. Um, there was something that you said that I wanted to really jump in on. Last night I was in a situation in which I was speaking to a man that I believe may have been abusive, right? And I was put in a situation where I did not want to argue with this male, right? And I have a policy of not arguing with males. I've made videos before, like the video of the woman who um, that man was like, um, was, was punching her in that, in the fast food restaurant. And then her son took him down. And I was telling these women, don't argue with these men, run. You just get, get away from them. Because mm -hmm. they're volatile, they're dangerous. I, I, like, I, I need to cover this story of these women. I believe they were in a bowling alley and this man and another police or, or security guard was calling them all out of their name and they're arguing back and forth. And I'm like, more power to you ladies because I cannot do it. And the mm -hmm. explanation that you gave about this, um, let me just quote you correctly, about yes. the orbito frontal cortex and the amygdala and the cortisol and testosterone and how they just lose control. Yeah, this is why I don't argue with them. So when mm -hmm. I was put in that situation last night, it really, it really opened up my eyes. And then one component that you left off of there is the role that male identified women play in making other women unsafe. Correct. Yes. Because in this patriarchy, we have women who are looking for the validation. They're looking for ways to align and appease men, and they will set you up. 
They'll yes, set you they up. Will. They will hang you out to dry all for the accolades or the atta girl of men. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is something that I address quite regularly on my channel, right? Women, women are conditioned yeah. so hard. They don't know better. Okay. Um, and so you, when you get to a place of operating out of love, yeah. You have to give grace because you have to understand that people really don't know better. The reason why there's so much anger, animosity towards other people is because we assume that a person, since a person is an adult, that they absolutely have to know better. So we do not give them grace because we close the door on what we understand that people know and don't know. The average woman is ignorant. She has no education That's on true. men. She does not know anything. She has, she was born into dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. So what women, the women being born into dysfunction and them functioning like this for a long time, they think that it's natural. Yeah. But they don't realize that they have come into a normalized or an already normalized situation. Yeah. So uh, I'm a teacher more than I'm anything, right? Because you, you can't tell people to do something, right? People only move when they have a strong reason why they need to move. Mm. Telling people to just do something with no energetic power behind their movement, you will fail in the getting to getting people to behave. So the reason that I teach the way I teach is because I give women a strong basis on why they need to move a certain way. Yeah. So people would say, you need to keep your legs closed, but you don't tell them why. So the woman continues to move off of her psychological programming, which is a false program that she don't know nothing about. So she yeah. can't actually keep her legs closed. And so men tell women, you chose him and that y'all should choose better because men do not think that women will actually change their behavior. Yes, they yes. think that women will remain in delusion and continue to make the mistakes that they're making, but they have made a gross underestimation of the things that they're doing and the women who are bold enough to come out here and let you know what's happening. So yeah. on my show, I teach women all of the sciences and all of the philosophies and things to make it real clear what's happening. So no matter what subject you take, you can look at it surface level and then you can go deep into that point, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to stay up here and they don't like to dig under the ground. So every single thing that I do, I make sure I dig under the ground so that you can see the whole picture, right? Yeah. So let's get to this women in this mammy sphere. That's what I call it. I didn't call Yeah, I call them. You got the man, <laughs> mammy manosphere sphere. and the mammy sphere. Okay. The mammy All right. Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So male identified women, they have been conditioned now. You have what is called principle. Yeah. Principles, okay, they are the same. They transcend. Principles are truth. They are fact. They are truth that stand the test of time. Hey, oh, sugar my pie. goodness. What a cutie pie. Oh, my goodness. I love you. Wow. We just got our broadcast blessed by a little cherub. Oh my goodness, look at this princess. Oh, hi. How are Oh, look at this pink little dress. Like the dress. Hey. Pink strawberries. Pink strawberries. Oh, how precious. Hi. hi, what a cutie. Hi. All right, get out the camera. Okay. All right, I love you. Oh. How amazing. Oh, we've had our broadcast blessed today by a little angel who came to, to show us why we're doing all of this for the ones who come behind us. Mm. Okay. So principles are truth that stand the test of time and that, that stand true in any field. It doesn't matter. 
principles. So leadership is about principles, standing on principles. So you didn't heard that. Mm. You have what is called the seven hermetic principles oh. in life. Okay. okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, so let's are, talk about these Hermes now. Let's go into it. These you are ready facts, for that? Yes. That stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. So the seventh hermetic principle is called the principle of gender. Yes, girl, gender, get into it. Get into it. <laughs> gender is in everything. Mm -hmm. Gender is in everything and they stand the same in every plane, physical, mental, and spiritual. Yes. So on the physical plane, okay, you have, let's, let's back up a little bit. When masculine and feminine principles come together, you mm -hmm. procreate, you yes. create life. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the physical plane, Life is only created on the physical plane through sex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which means that the male body is the masculine vessel on the physical plane, mm -hmm. not the mm -hmm. mental and spiritual plane. Those are two different planes, but on the physical plane, the male is the masculine counterpart. Mm -hmm. The female is the feminine counterpart. Mm -hmm. And when they come together through sex, they create a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. The brain, okay, is responsible for human behavior. So when you look at mm -hmm. the yin and yang, yeah. the yin and yang shows black and white. Black represents the feminine and white represents the masculine. Okay. All right. This is important to understand. What is masculine energy? That's the question that nobody has answered. They talk masculine and feminine all the time, but they do not tell you what masculine energy is because the people who are saying this don't know. They're just right. out here talking. Right. Masculine energy is a moving energy. Mm -hmm. It does work. So everybody has masculine energy in the physical. Every person has masculine energy on the physical plane because no living being can live without having both counterparts, masculine and feminine. In the physical body, in the physical body, masculine energy are chemicals because energy must flow. Energy must move. And the moving energy is masculine energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So women in the yin and yang, the yin represents black. And it has a, it's the feminine, right? And it has that small little white circle in there, right? Right. The yeah. feminine, go ahead. I'm, I, it's time for us to take a break. How much more time okay. do you need to, to finish this oh, one point? Oh no, this one's long. We need to. Okay. Okay. Talk. All right. So let me get everybody geared up for the break. Thank you. All right. So remember where it is that you are at. You were talking about the masculine with the small dot and why those colors are important. OK, so that's what we're going to pick back up on when we come back from this break. So listen, everybody, first of all, a huge thank you to Priscilla for coming. You know what we were supposed to we were supposed to talk about why it took so long for us to collaborate. So we're going to have to talk about that in the next segment because I see people making some comments. And I think that it's important for us as women, especially to be able to rein in some of our more humanness for the bigger picture. That's what I want. That's what I want to talk about in the next segment. So we have to keep on top of that. All right. So Princella, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for rising above the naysayers. I'm glad that I was able to come onto the other side of 
of naysayers as well and get into this collaboration. So thank you so much for coming out and dropping your wisdom and your knowledge. I know a lot about a lot of things, but I don't know, I don't know everything. And the things that you're talking about, I'm enjoying listening to, and I'm sure people are enjoying it as well. So we'll be back from this break. Mm -hmm. I appreciate each one of you for coming out and participating in this conversation. Right now, we're about to, Right now, we're about to take a movement break. We've been on this broadcast for an hour and 50 minutes. And so sitting is death. It is important for us to get up and move. So no matter what it is that you do, do something. Even if you just touch your toes and stretch, even if you just raise your arms over your head and stretch this way, do a little electric slide behind the scenes, whatever it is that you, that you want to do, do some squats, some jumping jacks, something, anything, but just take this time to move, to dance, to do the electric slide, to electric boogie, up jump the boogie, whatever it is that you're gonna do. And we'll be back in three and three.
All right. Woo. Welcome, 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 welcome back, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Oh, my goodness. So, listen, if you did not move before, you, ha you have got to have moved this time because that was amazing. And if you didn't get your groove on, here's another opportunity because we did receive a super apple in. So, let's. Let's get this party started. You know what time it is? You know what time? <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Listen. Woo. We received in a super apple from Dirt Dabbler. And Dirt Dabbler says, Princella is the truth, the way, and the light. Girl, you got disciples? I did not, <laughs> I did not realize that. All right, so here. Let us go through. <laughs> Aronica sends four dollars and says she did the electric slide. That is dope. Rakaya sends ten dollars and says, for both of you beautiful and wise women. Okay, let me put a thing on here. So I know that this is one of the ones that we are. Let me put what can I put here? Um, here, I'll put that one so I know that that one is being split. Of course, dirt dabblers is being split as well. And then there was a $20 one that had come in earlier that was going to be split as well. But I will work that out afterwards. So let's see. Uh, oh, James sends $2 and says, my client let me listen during her massage. Oh, well, I guess her your client was getting educated then <laughs> today. Aaliyah sends $2 and says, great calander. I guess that means collaboration. You know, we'd be having our spell check. Renisha sent $10 and says, for Princella, I love you. So here, this one is for you, Princella. So I will send that one to you. Perfect, 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 perfect. Um, Clear says, Tanya, I support your channel and I respect women. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, here. Miss Lady says, for for Sin and Priscilla equal powerhouse, for you, Sin and Priscilla equal powerhouse panel. You know what? We should talk about that. We should talk about that. But, you know, not too soon, not too soon until we have the things in the works. But we are definitely working on creating a way to take this conversation and take it to the next level. So absolutely. So this is another one that I will split and I will send over a dollar to Priscilla, a dollar to Sin. And I will keep a dollar for it myself. So I appreciate all of this. Thank you all so very, very much. Let me refresh and make sure. Okay, so I have everything. Wonderful. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Princella, let's get back to you. And let me just do some, let me do some, some housekeeping and some maintenance. Um, whenever I go live, <clears throat> There are people who get a text notification when I go live so that you get the link. You never miss a, a live broadcast. And if you want to join the text notification squad, the link is, if you go into the description of this video, you'll find the link to Princella's channel. You'll find the link to her website. If you go a little bit below that, you'll see the link to my website. And if you go to my website and just go to the, the tab for text, you can join the text notification squad. It's $1.99 a month and you get a notification whenever I go live. There's also a group where we meet behind the scenes on Telegram and we meet behind between videos. And I believe Princella also has some groups she's doing behind the scenes. I'm going to give her a few moments to talk about that. So that here, go ahead, Princella. Yes. Uh, so I have a, a discord group that uh, people can join just so you can get notifications when I go live on my discord and you can get that on my uh, on my channel. I also do memberships on my channel where we do zoom calls um, uh, every every 
let's see, every second Saturday of every month, I do movie night. Uh, so we all, all of my members get to come in and we get to break down movies. Uh, every Wednesday, I watch shows or we just have uh, communication amongst all of our members. So that way women can build relationships with women who are on the same wavelength and same journey as themselves. So I also run a book club uh, on Sundays so that I can teach women how to personally, de personally develop. So what I do is really active transformation for women. And if you wanna be a part of that, you can definitely come over there to my channel. Yeah, absolutely beautiful, beautiful. I love that, I love that. You know, I need to do more of that behind the scenes because I have the text notification squad and I've been wanting to start up some group coaching because I am a I'm a trained life coach as well as a certified clinical hypnotherapist. And mm -hmm. I um and I definitely want to do more of that. This is definitely inspiring because I love hearing that you have a book club, that you have that you watch movies with people because there was, you know, there's some love and romance shows that I would love to watch with people behind the scenes because a lot of this stuff needs to be broken down so that people can see case by case what it is that we are actually dealing with out here. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for being a part of this conversation. Let's talk a little bit before we get into, um, into the rest of the video so that mm -hmm. we can talk about what was it that took us so long to do a collaboration? Oh, okay. So we were originally going to do a collaboration. I think this was back in uh, February and I was yeah. pretty excited about it. Um, and then when I posted it in the, um, in the community post, there were, there were some people that were not really feeling the collaboration. Um, they weren't feeling, uh, they, the perspective they had on you and how you handle your interviews. They weren't feeling that because a lot of them are overprotective of their mm -hmm. content creators. So, um, after you saw that you kind of backed out, um, because you don't want to participate because of it. So it was, it was dead from, from then on, uh, you did it, mention that you would be open to a panel discussion as opposed mm. to a one-on-one -on -one at that time. And you know, to me, let's it, not talk. It let's not talk about the rest. Let's not talk about. Uh, the, <laughs> let's not talk about that part. Let's. let's <laughs> yeah, no, I was just saying. That, okay, okay. You know, at, at that point, it was what it was. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're here now as a result of another uh, catalyst, which mm -hmm, turned, mm -hmm. catalyst, which turned yes. out to be good. It was a catalyst. It turned out to be a good thing anyway. <laughs> you know what? That was quite inappropriate of me. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but, you know, there's certain things that I just don't want to talk about publicly because... Right. It, yeah, 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 you know, so yeah, but yeah I, yes. was, I trust me, I wasn't going there. I was not okay, going to say okay, that. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. But yes, so um, you know, one of the things that I learned from this situation because two things. So yeah, when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm just really not in the mood for the drama. I'm not in the mood for overprotective fans lunging down and picking apart. Um, you know, whatever it is that we decide to do, right? Mm -hmm. I would hope that us, that we female content creators in the, in the front, that we serve as an example for a few different things, that we serve as an example for when you're talking to a person and there's something that you have questions about, that you speak up and you ask the questions. Two... Mm -hmm that just because somebody else has an opinion of somebody doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that is the capital T truth that could be their lowercase t truth mm -hmm. and also you know we as we as women especially black women we have got to stop this the bullying of other black women we've got to stop the the not wanting us to to be together or come together or have discord or have beef and all of that other stuff because it doesn't serve us. We are stronger together. We're stronger with... It. So listen, you have an expertise in the research that you've done, molecular biology background and the research that you've done on men and relationships. I have an expertise in self-love. And so I'm mm -hmm. not going to know everything about everything just like you all know everything about everything. And I think it's important for people with different modalities to come together 
you know, because there will be overlap, like the seven hermetic principles and, you know, and some of the, I have an interest in neuroscience, neuropsychology, and I really, really want to dive into the brain and how the brain functions with some of these psychological principles and why we do some of what it is that we do because of the human brain. So, right. um, <laughs> somebody's saying we aren't that bad, Tanya. Sometimes people out there can be very vicious. What are some of your thoughts on women stopping the discord between one another and really coming together? Why is it that we have so much strife between us that keeps us weakened, that keeps us weakened in the face of a tremendous adversary? Well, we have to understand that 99% of the planet is not operating out of a place of love. Mm. Everybody is operating off of their own experiences, their own perceptions on reality. And these are unconscious responses. They're unconscious response patterns. So it's not, it's not to really throw slight at anybody because we're all operating in this level of unconsciousness. And what people, when we say unconsciousness, people do not understand what that means mm. okay in the physical body you have the brain and the brain is the computer that's the hardware that's designed for you to operate in this physical realm and the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system are your automatic nervous systems or is your automatic nervous system that responds unconsciously to environmental stimuli. And this is the feminine counterpart. The, this is infinite intelligence. Subconscious mind is infinite intelligence. So whatever experiences, information um, that a person comes across, the infinite intelligent being, uh, the system is going to respond without the organism being in conscious knowledge of it. So when people respond to certain stimuli, 99% of it is unconscious. It doesn't mean that they're bad people. It doesn't mean that they mean bad. It, they just came across an experience before, and this new experience is identical to the last one, and there is an automatic instant mm. response without mm. a critical thought that goes into a person's mind. So when we are, when I say operate in love, you have to operate and give people grace to understand that that's what's going on. And the people who you're giving grace to are not able to yeah. see themselves or other people on that level, right? Mm. So until we, teach people what love is until we move people from a level of, hey, I'm responding, you've done this, you've done that, I got all of it, and I'm, I'm having these same experiences, or I'm going to respond based on how the outcome was, until mm -hmm. we get people to critically think and all of that stuff, everybody is going to do that everybody all walks of life because that doesn't have anything to do yeah. with race creed sex or color right it's just how the human body works so i want to give people grace and understanding because when you seek understanding you get a bigger perspective and you can see things more clearly and you can respond in a more controlled mm -hmm. and graceful way right yes That's yes, just yes, yes, yes 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 if you were to sum that up so that a fifth grader could understand it, because, you know, mm -hmm. how would you sum that up in a sentence so that fifth, or a sentence or two so that a fifth grader could understand? What you think is personal is not personal. And if you slow down, ask questions, and consider all of the information, you'll grow a new understanding and you can see things more clearly most of the things that you see are of yourself and not of other people right Ooh, so just girl. slow down yeah yeah yes 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 yes, yes. 
all right well you know what we are back on the broadcast and we're going to jump back into the topic i'm glad that we took that segue i'm glad that things aligned for us to be able to meet up and and come into collaboration um also i think that it is i think you know what i think it's important for people to slow down to mm -hmm. slow down and listen and hear and consider you know, and just see, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I take from the stories that you told earlier is that you continue to try, you know, you continue to put yourself out there. You continue to date these XY chromosome persons and have, you know, interactions with them. That thing that you said about the people on, on break, that, that what the guy said about his, his, his wife's niece, that just was mm -hmm. like a gut punch to me because we know that this happens and these people are unapologetic and just grotesque with it. I just, you know what, anything that can help us overall, the question of the broadcast is lesbianism, the way for black women mm -hmm. to save themselves. And you said that there are four options, you mm -hmm. know, um, continue to date men, but date them with information, um, be celibate with yourself, um, date women, and the fourth one is what? I missed one. Just play with toys, you know. Oh, and be yeah. on OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and giving Damn. everybody a show. Well, you I got this one. This one is nine inches and this one is ten and a half. Which one which, which one should I use today? Silicone or rubber? You can do that, girl. Ain't nobody playing with you. You know, Ain't nobody gonna stop crazy. You. I'm 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 pu I'm publishing a video tomorrow of a girl yeah. who is talk so if you're not on my other channel on the the two the clips channel go over to youtube.com forward slash tanya tko clips so you just search my name and scroll down far enough or just search for tanya tko on the word clips but mm -hmm. um i have another channel and i'm publishing a video tomorrow with a girl who's talking about how men are jealous of women and they are. basically saying that men criticize you for being a hoe or easy or 304 or, or thotty and all this other stuff, right? But then on the flip side, they say, oh, if I was a woman, they do know that they would be much worse. But what would be the difference? The difference is that you're operating with female DNA and they're operating with male DNA. And mm -hmm. in their minds, they would be, how many of you out there, if you have heard men say that they would be the biggest sluts out there, that they would be the biggest hoes, that if they were women, that they would be the biggest porn stars, prostitutes, all of that. If you have heard them say that, put up a, put up a one. If you've never heard them say that, put up a zero, because I, I want to see some of these, these answers. Because I've heard it, and the thing about it is, they are telling you, they're telling you that if they had the female body part, the female anatomy, they would take men for every dollar that they got. They would have no, this is part of the, listen, this is part of the reason I've been doing a lot of videos about trans, et cetera, because a, a, an XY chromosome person who says that they're trans is still operating from that mentality. This is why a lot of them are in that profession. I'm not gonna get into it in this video because I don't wanna bring the controversial heat on you, but let's take a look at these, at these comments. So people have seen it. Most people have seen men saying this. The, the, the men know. We all, one person has a zero, right? right. Another person has a zero. They, they're saying they've never seen it. Okay. They could be uh, men, though. <laughs> trying, <laughs> yeah, you, trying to well, count it, yeah. You know what? And even I did a broadcast with gay men, and gay men don't even regard their anuses as anything private or special. They just give it up. They Anywhere, anytime, yeah. and any size. They don't even care about it getting stretched or ripped or anything. They, they don't Tanya. care. Yes. No, it, it's seriously. It, no, for real. Because back in 2016, when I was still dating men and still doped up on the idea of men that I was going to find me a, a, a leader and provide a protect, all that mess, um, I started to do some research on the LGBT community as far as men are concerned, right? Yeah. So you said that they don't regard their anus as nothing, right? Right. So what I did is I went and got a profile on one of them gay apps for them and, and created a fake profile. And I started talking to these men on the gay app. The first dude that sent me a message, dark skinned dude, 
you wouldn't even think that he was out here doing this. He sent me a, a message talking about, yeah, I'm just looking to hook up for some, some dick, right? <laughs> and he sent me a picture of his anus. And when I tell you, it was like a, a, a cereal bowl. It was a <laughs> shut, cereal. The, shut the front door. Shut <laughs> up. What? I'm you, serious. You, so you say he walking and his food is just falling out. Listen, it was a man. Listen, this dude is taking pipe that I can't even take as a woman. T- listen, th- well, it's like know, men like pain. I need y'all to understand men like pain. It's they are addicted. It, it's women and men really do have an inverse relationship. But yes, it was a cuenco. Grande, Miss Latinas. Grande. The cuenco was grande. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you know what? This broadcast will never be monetized. Not like this. <laughs> not, not, not like this. Not like this. Right. It's the size of a cereal bowl, though, for real. Yes, <sighs> I'm serious. I am not lying to you. And then check this out. I t- I, after I discovered all the stuff that I discovered about these dudes being on the DL. I, this was right. This was 2016, 20, 2016, 2017. I go back. I'm doing videos on Facebook. I go to my audience. I say, look, y'all. Y'all do not know what these men are doing. I'm going to need y'all to go make y'all a profile in your city and see who on here and what's happening. So a woman in my audience decided that she was going to do that. I'm and do baby, it. she found her son's youth pastor on there. And he, they was she caught him just before he was finna take them on a camping trip, an all boys camping trip. Boy, she went up to that church and raised hell, and took her son out of yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, now there's one thing that I don't play with, and I don't play with the harming of children. That's one thing I don't give a damn who you are. I don't play with that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? I am going to create a profile on one of these apps and just see. Oh, my goodness. And you know what was really funny is. I was watching this video yesterday of this girl who was arguing with this guy about why he don't want to be with her and take care of the baby. And he was like, look, I'm not finna have my cousin baby. And she was like, yeah, but you hid that from me until it was too late and this, that, and the other. And then she was like, well, why don't you just tell them how I saw you in the bed with a man, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I was just thinking about the correlation between some of these misogynists and men loving men, you know? So it's like, they, you know what? And I did a video the other day where I was like, listen, a man, nothing's going to get in between a man and his pleasure. He's going to mm-hmm. go in. Like, we think men are one thing that they're really not. They're going to be yeah. in those DMs. If they have a fantasy, they're going to fulfill it. And I said, listen, this is why ladies do not wait uh, to fill. Don't get old with your fantasies unfulfilled. Go and and figure out what you like. And that, that's and, it. And, and there was one woman who was like, I'm not going to support you telling women to be hoes. And and the thing about it is the whole whole mentality is something that's created by misogyny and the patriarchy to keep women in control. But I'm not telling anybody to spread their body hither or thither. I'm just telling women to know what you like. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Tanya, that's yeah? my message. So by you saying that, they say that you're promoting whore culture. By me saying it, they're saying I'm promoting lesbianism because Mm. the the core of the message is freedom of choice. Yeah. Women can do whatever best suits them for their journey. Yes. And and what I want women to do, because sexual energy is a creative energy that belongs to the feminine counterpart. And women can express their sexuality any way they choose to. Yeah. So I want women to have sexual freedom. Sexual freedom does not mean recklessness. It yeah. means 
obtaining and controlling the power and freely using that creative energy any way you choose to further your goals in life because that power belongs to you yes so yes 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 you know one thing that i wanted to ask you and and i was i was thinking about this um when we were nonetheless the topic is how female liberation sexual liberation is often the disguise for male for for attention for the male gaze yes. that it's just it's just the flip side of misogyny i was looking at some videos by some sukiana and some young lady have a video that just dropped and she was i don't know how many of you have seen it she was humping her ass in a white man's face at behind a desk and she was talking about her deep throat and her vagina and her pussy and, and stealing other people's man and all this other stuff and i was i had to ask myself the question i'm like is this female empowerment is this or is this attention for the male gaze um, I'm, I'm curious about your point of view on that, because, yes, we want women to be liberated and sexually free. But how do we know that that is true freedom or whether or not it's it's the it's the slavery, the prison of, of male perception? OK. All right. So first and foremost, mm -hmm. before we can say what slavery and what's freedom, we need to be able to determine what's freedom. Mm -hmm. Some people think. See, you can't be free without the ability to think and rationalize. Mm. And freedom does not mean do what you want to do recklessly. Freedom means the ability to self-govern. So sexual freedom is, the, is about the ability for women to govern okay. their own sexual energy and not for men to govern it. Right. What women are displaying is another form of sexual slavery disguised as mm -hmm. sexual freedom. Oh, now, I'm about to pull out a book. Hold on. Let me write down yes. the title, girl, because... I definitely want to learn more about that. Oh, so, the 48 laws of put Girl, let me go grab mine too. <laughs> go ahead, talk. Yes. I'm listening. Hold on, I got to grab mine. Hold on. Oh, darn it. It is time for us to take a break. Girl, I got my book right here too. But it is break time. These breaks are coming fast. The, the conversation is so good. All right. So listen. Oh, my goodness. That means that we've been on here for two and a half hours. So listen, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a quick movement break. I want you all to move because sitting is death. We've been on this broadcast for two and a half hours. And I want you all to not just do this on my broadcast, but while you're watching, while you're binge watching these shows, Make sure that at the end of every show or that you set yourself a timer, that you're not just sitting there, sitting, eating, letting your blood coagulate in your legs. Far too many of us. And you know what, Princella, I want to talk about fitness, health, and, and, having, and having governance of your own body, a mm -hmm. body autonomy, as well as just being in, in, your, in your best self. I want to talk about that with you as well. So um, we're going to we're going to take this quick break. We're going to come back and we still need to come back to the thing that we were going to talk about with the yin and yang with the small black dot. Um, we are we're going to stay on the broadcast for half an hour more. So we have to get everything talked about because this is already a three hour broadcast. Oh, well, in half an hour, it'll be a three hour broadcast. But then we're going to have to collaborate again. Are you down with mm -hmm. another collaboration? Absolutely. All right, wonderful, wonderful. If you all are enjoying this, make sure that you thumbs up the broadcast. Princella's links are in the description. Go over to her channel, subscribe to her channel. My links are in the description, depending on which platform you're watching this on, because this is, it was able to simultaneously broadcast on your platform too, correct? Yes. All right, what are the numbers looking like on your broadcast for the, um, for the, for the? 1.6 thousand. Oh, wow. It's 1.5 on mine. Okay. So good, 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 good. So we are impacting a, a tremendous amount of people. All right. So listen, we are going to, I want you all to get up. 
I want you to stretch, do some squats. And when we come back, I want you to tell people in the comments what it is that you did. You can send a dollar through in the cash app and tell me what it is that you did and I'll read it aloud on air. If you wanna send something through for Princella and I, you can send it through in the cash app. There's gonna be some links that are gonna come up on the screen and I'll make sure that she gets it right after the broadcast. And other than that, so squats, running in place, jumping jacks, any other adv any other ideas, dance? Well, give, give an idea for people to do that they can do during the, broad the break. Give an idea. Um, you, if you got any musical instruments, you can go play some musical instruments or you can do my favorite. Go make yourself a nice cocktail and go out and look at the sun while it's still out. Oh, you know what? That's important too. Getting your vitamin D. Absolutely. So just make sure that you get up and move. We will be back in three and three. Hey, mama. more seconds. Ooh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Listen, I put on a band on my legs and all you gotta do, listen, don't, don't look at me like that. All you gotta do, a little movement goes a long way. You, put these, listen, you don't have to look at me like that. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. Don't do I, you, okay. You know what? When I got on my jeans and my butt is popping, nobody gonna be able to say nothing to me. So that's mm -hmm. what I did. I wanna know what you all did during the break. All it takes is a little band, put it around your legs, and anything that you do, side steps, squats, hip thrust, no matter what it is that you do. Whew, so that's what I was doing. I want to see what some of you all were doing during the break. Huh, we're going to check the apples, and then I'm going to, um, whew, listen. Huh. Oh! I put it on for the thing to play, okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, all right. Let me check some of these apples here. Okay. So Drip says, too many breaks, girl. Let's go with the show. We're taking a break almost every half an hour. How is that too many? Get up and move. It's not too many breaks. Get up and move. It's for your health and your life. If you're not going to invest in yourself and love yourself enough to be like, you know what, I've been sitting for half an hour. If, if, if moving two times in an hour is too much for you, then that makes me wonder what's going on when you're not on this broadcast. Moving two times in an hour is not too much. But I appreciate your point of view. Thank you. Ursula sends $10 and says, I'm so glad to see this collab. Thank you, Ursula. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, that's pretty loud. Let me turn that down. I appreciate that. Claire sends $45 and says, wait, is, is that, wait, is that a cereal bowl? <laughs> I cannot. Yeah, it, it, it's grande. It's big. It, in, in, in every language, she say it's grande. In uh, French, she says it's grande. In uh, Spanish, and what else? What what other language is that? I see French. No, yeah, it's I in English, Spanish. Spanish, and French. Yeah, English, Spanish, and French is big bowl. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get on one of these apps. I'm gonna get on one of them. Miss Lady sends two dollars and says, "I did vacuuming. Please revisit the seven hermetic principles." Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Aaliyah sends two dollars and says, "Autocorrect did me wrong." I know that's what I'm saying, but I still read it right, right? And Cherie says, "Great show for TKO." Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me refresh and make sure that I have everyone. Oh, look! And here, five dollars for Queen Maker in my name, Cherie Lachelle. Love y'all. Hey. So here, so I'm gonna put this right here so I know that that goes to you. Thank you, thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we got all of them. So, Princella, we have about half an hour left now at this point. So, let us go ahead and get into we're getting back into the set, the seven hermetic principles where we were talking about how everything has a gender. And okay, so, well, let's go back before we get there because we was talking about the sexual freedom thing, right? Yes, yes, and, yes, 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 yes. Right. I want to make sure I finish that point because the what people again, freedom is the ability to self govern, right? Yes. And what I'm saying is that women have because sexual energy is a creative energy that belongs to the feminine, mm -hmm. that women would operate in their optimal self when they are sexually free, when they have the ability to govern their own sexual energy, right? Because that is a flowing energy. Men should not have power over sexual energy because that belongs to the women. Mm -hmm. But what they are promoting out there is the illusion of freedom, which mm -hmm. is a form of slavery. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because a woman who is owning her sexual power does not expel it through actually having sex. She doesn't. Right. Right. And the, when you're dealing with men in seminal fluid, okay. Because let me tell you, you, you mentioned it in the womb, seminal fluid stays in the body, not just the womb, because that's a different, that's a, that's an environment that's manipulated. So, but we'll talk about that another time. But anyway, mm -hmm. women limit their sexual behavior with men when they're governing themselves. So I pulled out the 48 laws of power mm -hmm. because law number 31 says control the options, get others to play the cards you deal. In a system of patriarchy, they give you by lateral answers, mm -hmm. right? They give you by choices. They give mm -hmm. you two choices. They mm -hmm. give you black and white choices, mm -hmm. two dimensional. So it's either this or that. That's yeah. how you end up Democratic and the Republican Party, this or that, mm -hmm. black or mm -hmm. white, right? Yeah. So in this system, 
it's either slavery or freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People have been given the illusion of freedom and not true freedom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So control the options, get others to play the cards that you deal. The best descript, the best deceptions, the best deceptions are the ones that seem to give the other person a choice. Your victims feel they are in control. Your victims feel like they in control, yes. but are actually your puppets. Mm -hmm. Give people options that come out in your favor, whichever one they choose. Yeah. Force them to make choices between the lesser of two evils. Two, the lesser of two evils. What I do for women is I give them four choices, a <laughs> freedom of true choice. But the system gives people two choices. Either you heterosexual or you're gay. Either you're Republican or you're Democrat. Either you're black or you're white. Okay. Either you're good or you're bad. It is a two dimensional linear thinking process that allows the elites or the people who are controlling you to manipulate you. So now it's either freedom or slavery, but the average person does not know freedom. So they still choose a form of slavery under Ooh. the guide of freedom. Yes, girl. Yes, 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 yes. And, and so that's what we're experiencing with people like Sukiana, Cardi B, and all of these people, because that is not sexual freedom. What I do is sexual freedom. This is sexual freedom, because guess what? You cannot shame me on choosing to date women because I have the freedom to, to decide how I express my sexual energy because as a dark feminine Lilith walking the planet, I have that right. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to give that energy to no male. I don't have to give it to nobody. I can use that to create. And it's that creative energy that make the queen maker who the hell she is because mm. I have that sexual power. And what I'm trying to give women is the ability to own that sexual power without guilt, without shame, because this system is built on making you shame and fearful so that they can make their money off you and control your behavior. Yes, That's it. yes. And you know what? So let's get into the nuance of it. How yeah. do we know that this behavior from the Sookies and the Cardis and the um, and the Glorillas and the Sexy Reds and how do we know that that is not that it that is not freedom that it's slavery? How do we know? Because it because looks of, to some people be, like freedom. Because of the outcomes. Before first the nature, then the outcomes. Right. So. It's not freedom to recklessly put yourself in dangerous positions. It's not freedom to put yourself in a position where you end up being brutalized, where you end up with diseases, where you end up. This is not freedom, but this is what that attracts. This is what that pulls towards you. And yeah. then the freedom to be reckless, to influence younger the younger audience to go out there and be reckless thinking they have a thinking they have power that they do not have yeah. right because you're doing this for men who are riled up in with 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 the desire for sex and a lot of these dudes are not even getting sex so you really don't even understand what it is that you're doing that is not freedom when you're operating in ignorance in mm -hmm. order to truly be free one has to be disciplined yeah. one has to be knowledgeable one has to have wisdom and understanding the people who are doing this have no wisdom they have no understanding they have no knowledge, but they do have the illusion of freedom where they believe that they can just be reckless with yeah. no consequences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let me come on in the tail end of that and say I did a video on the Sukiana stuff when she was, you know, grabbed by that man who had kissed her and all that other stuff. Right. 
And I played some footage from her video, and there were a bunch of women with strollers and baby carriages with mm -hmm. the, no fathers for these children around, right? Mm -hmm. And so they were, they're engaging in this behavior, like you said, that can be very dangerous, very volatile, put you at risk for these STDs. You know who's the fastest growing population of herpes, HIV, and HPV, right? As well as chlamydia and syphilis. We know who's the fastest growing population. And unfortunately, because, because of the, the, the duality the, or the two system the two choice system that we have, mm -hmm. that it does look like, it looks like freedom, but who's making the money? Right. Them. Who's making, exactly. Who's, 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 who are the, who's getting the, the, the 360 royalties and who's really making the, the profit mm -hmm. from it. And I mm -hmm. remember I covered this video when Erica Badu was going, going viral for standing there with her daughter Puma and all you saw was their, you know, just their, their nice curvy derrieres, right? And people were in a huff about it. And in the video, what I did was I, I, I photoshopped Snoop Dogg in the middle of these two young ladies or the two women, um, Erica and her daughter. And I was like, now which one of these images looks more, you know, more normalized or more satisfactory and we've become so it's become so normalized to see a man like Snoop Dogg or what was this guy's name who was participating in that Freaknik documentary that doodle -doo brown dude you know who I'm talking oh, about I didn't even see, oh I didn't even see it no the guy who used to sing doodle -doo brown I, I don't think the documentary came out yet oh, okay. but um what's his name Luke Luke right okay. mm -hmm. so we've become so used to these images of men being in control of women's sex and sexuality that to mm -hmm. see two women standing there without a man in purview was mm -hmm. offensive to some people they were like how dare you be there standing but if a man was standing right between them with his face between the butt cheeks talking about i love big exactly. butts and that no one right. would have any no one would have any issue with it but the women deciding to take a picture without men present. Yes, and people. women have a problem with that because they've been conditioned and normalized mm -hmm. into believing that men are to control women's sexuality. Women, yeah. the sexual energy belongs to the feminine. That yes. is her energy because that is the creative energy. Yes. And so women have been subjugated and men have taken their power and used their power against them. And yes. women could harness that power and take back what's rightfully their own, yes. but they do not know how to use it. They do not know how to harness it, right? Yes. And so women have to be deprogrammed yes. and they have to be retaught how to be women because women do not know how to be women. They are recklessly giving up all their power to yes. men and allowing men to destroy them with it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to show people this right here because I think it's, oh, hold on. I wanted to show people this right here. So on your screen, right? You will see a book. This is from Audible. You can listen to it on Audible. This is Kaibalian, right? This is the seven hermetic principles. If you want to get an audio book so that you can listen to the seven principles, because the, when you hear, when you listen to this, you will see the basis of all religion. You will see the basis of all philosophical thought. You will see the basis of spirituality because they go into the, the seven the, the seven principles of, of crystal energy and because we're going to get back into the into the gender because that is in here too because in the Kaibalion where it talks about the hermetic principle for gender it talks about how we got it wrong on the batteries because feminine energy has a particular form of creation to it yes and so and so yes this is it right here so just take a screenshot of that and then just look that up I'll put this let me turn off this thing so so you all can see. You see that? Mm -hmm. And you see the, so there. Yes. Take a look and a listen to that. You have a different one? Or you, it's the same one, but this okay. is the three initiates in the, in the um, 
book form. In the right? book form. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So there you have two options, the, um, the Audible or the book. Or you can get both of them. I like to get the book and the audio book sometimes just to read and listen at the same time. They say that your retention goes up by 33% when you do that. So mm. let's, because we're running low in time now, so we have to jump back on track. Yes. The um, there were a few things. Okay, we were talking about the freedom to self govern. We were talking about the yin, the yang. Um, let's yes. jump into that. So we were talking about okay. the black with the white and the white with the uh -huh. little black. Let's talk about that. Okay. So women are the feminine counterpart in the physical plane. Remember, you have physical, mental, and spiritual. Okay. So the first plane is the physical plane and the woman is the feminine vessel, which means that she is in the creative vessel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you go to the mind space, moving from the body to the mind. Okay. Well, let me go back so I can make you remember that men and women on the physical plane come together to create a baby through mm -hmm. sex. Mm -hmm. That's, the masculine and feminine joining on the on the physical plane. That is the only purpose for the masculine and feminine counterpart on the physical plane, the procreation through sex, because to bring masculine and feminine together creates life. Mm -hmm. No life can exist without both masculine and feminine together. Hmm. So that means as a living, breathing organism with inside of you, you have both masculine and feminine hmm. counterparts okay. Okay. operating in you because you are a living organism. Okay. Now let's move from the body to the mind. Mm -hmm. The left side of the brain is the analytical side the logical side okay this is still in the physical i'm sorry this is still in the physical because we're talking about the brain left side is the logical side right side is the feminine side it's the creative side right it's the uh imaginative side of the brain okay and the left side is your analytical side okay when you bring them two together you take action or crit or or conscious thought because your conscious mind your critical mind the mind that asks questions who what when where why and how that's your conscious mind that's your masculine mind your feminine mind is the creative artistic side of the mind so when you marry willpower, work ethic, critical thought, who, what, when, where, and why, you marry that to creativity, you manifest into the physical reality what it is that you want. So if you want to write a book, you will ask yourself, okay, how do I produce a book? Who, what, when, where, why, what am I talking about? What is this gonna be about? Uh, how much is this going to cost? This is how much time it's going to take, blah, blah, blah. What's the subject? Blah, blah, blah. That's your critical mind going to work. Mm -hmm. And your creative mind is all of the characters and the storyline and all of that. When you marry these two, then you make a new baby. You yes. make a mind child. You have a mind child. It's about procreation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what the deal is is that in the yin and yang the black area in the yin and yang is the feminine side of the brain which is the cre or is the feminine side which is the creative since women are in the feminine side the creative body they have more of a capability to create and reproduce and manifest than men because the yin only needs a small amount of masculine energy 
to manifest something. That's why it has that small white circle in it. Mm -hmm. That small white circle is the masculine energy. Women have masculine energy just by existing and living on the planet. But because they're in the feminine vessel, they're automatically the creative vessel, which means that women don't have to do as much work as men to create something. When you look at the white side that has the small black hole in there, the small black circle, men have a very small access to the creative. The only way that they can create in large quantities is through access of a woman. Mm-hmm. That's that's what that yin and yang is showing. The masculine has too much work ethic. It depends too much. So this is your this is the reason why the males operate mainly from the left side of the brain and they have a shutdown or they communicate only from this side mainly. Their right side is practically shut down. This is why males operate like robots. This is why you say a man is supposed to do. He's supposed Mm -hmm. to do because he is in the masculine vessel, which makes life harder if he does not have access to a woman. Women are God on earth earth yeah especially if she's a black woman because Mm -hmm. black represents the feminine woman represents the feminine Mm -hmm. so black women are from the feminine race the feminine vessel Mm -hmm. she's double feminine which makes her ultra creative This is why black people are on the bottom of a socioeconomic pyramid because necessity is the mother of invention. You hear that? It didn't say necessity was the father of invention. It says necessity is the mother of invention. Why is this important? Because the subconscious mind is the feminine mind. It is the creative mind. So who is the collective unconscious? Women are planet Earth's collective unconscious. So you program women with the philosophies and then you reproduce through the woman. This Mm -hmm. is the reason why you can't teach men anything because men are not the subconscious. Women are. And so until women change their mind and know who the hell they are, they will continue to wreak havoc on the planet by bowing down to the masculine. You are out of order. Women are the power source on this planet and women have to change the fucked up program that was implemented in them by the elites. You have been programmed to worship men and it's you who are the power source. Mm -hmm. Erase the program. Thank you. That is beautifully stated, beautifully stated. And unfortunately, we are walking around asleep. We have been programmed and conditioned into believing the opposite of what is true. We've been programmed to believe that uh, that God is a white man. (laughs) We've been programmed to believe that men are natural leaders, that men are protectors, providers, that men are what else? That men are independent, that men are strong that men are a lot of different things, that men are not emotional, that men are, we've been programmed to believe that they're logical. We've been programmed to believe a lot of different things. And Mm -hmm. we've been programmed. Yeah, we've been programmed to separate ourselves from our intuition. And as a result, there's so many of us who are walking around sick and diseased. And, you know, I thought about this, um, Years ago, I came to this realization when when I was when I was in my 20s and I was looking around at all of my friends who were becoming pregnant and all of the issues that they were that they were facing. Right. 
And I realized because I started, this was around a time that I, I came online and I was listening to the people who were talking about all, you know, this whole man, when the manosphere was young and they were, and they had the, 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 the big names out there that were talking all this mess. And they were like talking about how women are choosing all these bad men and they shouldn't be here and this that, and the other. And I thought to myself, I was like, Look at all of these situations in which women disempowered and disconnected from her true essence are making these decisions out here. And these decisions are leading to children. If it were not for the optimism, the hope, the naivete, the ignorance of women, most of the children here on earth would not be here because mm -hmm. most of my friends were having hope that these men were going to act right, that these men were going to step up, that these men were going to do X, Y, Z. And it was mm -hmm. that hope that made them go through with the pregnancy. It was that exactly. hope that made them carry for nine mm -hmm. months. It was that hope, that optimism based on, on no evidence. Absolutely. And so you just hit on the reason why men have a major problem with me putting out into the atmosphere that men are incapable of love. Men right. cannot love. And that's the reason what you just said, because if women stop believing yeah. that men have a capability of love, women would close up shop. There yes, would absolutely. literally be no reason to deal with men at that point. And so every time I say it, I could say it in passing, men get antsy and they get irritated. They get mad. It don't matter. We are capable of love. She telling y'all wrong. You know why? Because tell the truth and shame the devil. The male knows he's incapable of love. And he's been selling women love wolf tickets for years, dangling it in front of her face and making women work for this scarce idea that, well, a man's love is special. The mm. reason that you ain't get no love from him because you just wasn't the one. See, right. that's the game. Yeah. And it makes women push their fucking boundaries and, and sacrifice themselves playing a gambling game. And then she the one left holding the bag at the end. Yeah. But if she knew unequivocally that men were not capable of love, that game wouldn't work and women would not be giving up their value for hope no damn more. Yeah. Thinking that I'm special, I need your validation because if a man loves me, that means I'm better than all the other women. People always talking about you were using. I don't care about those other girls. Just be good to me. I don't care what you do to them. Just be good to me. Women have been tricked into competing with other women to for male validation. So if he don't do this to me, that means I'm better than you as a woman. Women been fucked up through this thing called love. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. And right on time, because we are at the end of the broadcast. I had other questions for you. Let me, I need you to answer them in 60 seconds or less. Okay. Okay. There were some people who were saying that we just need to date men of other races because other races of men are better. Address that. Men are men all over the globe. They selling men are fucking kids in Afghanistan because they don't have no resources. So they're selling their daughters. These are Muslim men. You have Muslim women telling y'all to stop dating Muslim men because Muslim men will come over here and use you for everything that you got. And then when he's ready to get married, he drop you and go marry uh, somebody from his own culture. You have men raping women all over the globe in Africa right now. They're upset because they had they said the president said in south africa if y'all rape and disrespect women you're going to jail all of the african men are mad because they're putting limits on their behavior a male is a male it don't matter they got the full b movement right over there in south korea because them south koreans are tired of them so a man is a damn man period mm, okay okay and next question all men majority of men some men who are you referring to the majority of men, the overwhelming majority, standard deviation population curve. 
uh, every no matter what population you're talking about there's a normal distribution 68.2 percent of any population will fall within the median and 95 percent of all uh populations fall within two standard deviations um, of the mean so um 85 percent of any population is average and below right mm -hmm. and very few are above mm -hmm. average but these super intelligent high men who have these emotional capabilities and everything baby you looking at three standard deviations from the mean you're looking for an anomaly okay all right okay all right well you know what listen i'm gonna give you an opportunity to let the people know how and where to find you go for it all right, you can find me at the Queen Maker. You can just type that in on YouTube and you'll pop right up over there at the High Power Podcast. You can go get my book, 41 Shades of Men, uh, at my website, PrincellaTheQueenMaker.com. And you can hit me up on TikTok, uh, the, Queen Maker, uh, the, uh, the Queen Maker Official, and IG, the Queen Maker Official. Come follow me. All right, make sure that you follow Princella and give her your listen it's been amazing oh you know what i need to check the apples before we leave to see what people were saying before we we jump out of here we definitely have to collaborate again i am tanya tko i'm a self-love specialist from tanya tko.com this is my book right here it's a self-love affirmations journal and it is oh wow you know what it just it sold out on amazon so I'm going to get some more in stock, but this is a journal that you use right before you go to bed and it has beautiful pictures in there and the actual affirmations that you need to say and write right before you go to sleep. And as you're sleeping, these ideas become manifest. And when it comes to affirmations, that's how when you plant that seed and when you go into that creative space, when your body leave, when your spirit leaves out from your body and your body is toiling over these ideas as you're resting. And it just because this book is it works like magic. It changes everything. And for those of you who have gotten my book, you know, for sure. So this is the book of affirmation, self love It's going to be back in stock on Amazon. So go to Amazon and add it to your favorites. Now just search for Tanya TKO on Amazon and you will see the book come up. Add it, add it to your favorites so that when it comes back into stock that you all will be able to get your copy. Once you say that, and listen, change comes swift and so quick that you wouldn't know that you ever felt a different way before you um, before you had gotten the book. So, Princella, let's... Um... Oh, so how was this, um, how was this collaboration for you, my dear? Oh, I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, it was great to, to bring you out. Let me check these last apples. Um, then I'm going to check the PayPal. And then after that, we're going to say our goodbye. So I appreciate everybody for coming out. Let's see what we... Oh, I put on the music again. Oh, well, let me just... Hey, mm -hmm. it's low, the music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and thumbs up, thumbs up. Make sure you follow Princella. Her link is in the description. My link is in the description as well. So Denise sends $20 that says, awesome show for you and the queen. Love you, ladies. She says, guys, but I really want us to get out of the, the habit of using the word guy to refer to women and general population. I like when we say ladies or gals or whatnot, but I definitely think that we need to differentiate because if you're in a room full of men, I tried this when I was in Puerto Rico. Because, you know, Puerto Rico, they have the um, the uh, the gender based words. And when I was in Puerto Rico and I started referring to groups of men and women as nosotras, the men started getting angry to be referred to as a group by the feminine. And so I think that we women definitely have to start putting our foot down and carving a line for us to not be referred to as guys. So I want us to just pay attention right. to our language. I am Absolutely. a certified clinical hypnotherapist. That's how I was able to write the book of affirmation. So our, our words are important. So I appreciate mm -hmm. the love in which this was sent. Do not take my analyzation as criticism. I am, let me put this here so that I know that we're sharing that. Mm -hmm. And Kelly sends $2 and says, I have the nurses coming in here to dance with me. So see, <laughs> she um, she's enjoying the break. So I'm happy yeah. to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. You know, because there was one person who was like, we're taking too many breaks. But did we take too many breaks? If we're doing 
two breaks in an hour just for movement. I know we get so used to not moving. That's why it's even more important to continue to move. I'm going to go over to the PayPal and make sure that I check that before we jump out of here because some people have sent via PayPal. So I want to stay on mm -hmm. top of that because Cash App is the main platform. All right. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah, so we did get some. Blondell says that kind of content love. She sends $2. And Latasha says it's late in Luxembourg. So I went to the pantry downstairs and back. Okay, listen. Hopefully when you went to the pantry, you weren't eating late. Hopefully you weren't doing that. But thank you. I appreciate you letting me know that there was some sort of movement going. Some people like the dance breaks. Some people mm -hmm. don't. What are your thoughts of the dance breaks, Princella? Let me hear. Oh, I, I like I like them um, to get up and move around. I think a lot of people um, are used to watching me and I don't take breaks. And I, I we look up like we're so focused on the the, the the deal that we look up and we'd have been talking for four hours sometimes i oh. mean i don't went seven hours with no break so they used to that that's that's oh. why yeah oh i see i see well you know what i implore you to find some time to move around you know there's so many black women who are getting these pulmonary embolisms and all of these mm -hmm. things because the blood is just not moving if we mm -hmm. get a chance make sure that you lay on your back and do legs up a wall Put your legs mm -hmm. up the wall and let your legs hang out there. Um, stand on one leg, jump rope, jump on a on a trampoline. We've got to keep these, like I, he I hear a lot of women talking about they have strong menstrual cramps. The trampoline is the only exercise that exercises every organ in your body. Get yourself a little mm -hmm. rebounder and jump on that. Jumping mm -hmm. is integral for keeping our cartilage, our bones, our, our musculature, all of that for keeping it very healthy as well mm -hmm. as taking care of the organs, the, the motion of jumping is very important for us. So do, 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 do the internal work. Love yourself enough to know that number one, exercise is it, it compiled. So whether you do five minutes now, five minutes later, that's still 10 minutes of exercise. So get your exercise in. You raised your hand, Ma, what's up? Yes, I just I wanted to make sure I addressed this comment that came across. This guy says men create structure uh, for and discipline for families. So without men, you don't have no structure. <laughs> um, the same men who don't have structure and discipline for themselves, mm. who can't even control what's in their pants, are yeah. telling you about controlling and structuring a family. You don't have a right, sir. The, 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 the hero's journey is for men to be in the wild, to lead and structure themselves. And once they have proven themselves capable, then they are rewarded with family. Y'all been rewarded with stuff that you ain't got no business having. Mm. You shouldn't have no family. You shouldn't have no woman. You shouldn't have no kids. You shouldn't have nothing but yourself to reflect on and figure out why you are subpar. So when you get yourself together, then you talk to me about some uh, structure and discipline. Yes, yes. You know what? I'm so glad that you came on. I'm glad that we had a chance to talk because you have put together some pieces for me that I've thought but really didn't didn't have the 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 appendix on it. And so one of the things that I've constantly wondered is how is it that men are saying that they're leaders and they can't govern themselves? They can't you you see you know, from the from the pauper to the president even Bill Clinton had his zipper down in the damn White House. It's like walk in front of them shimmying with a little jiggle here and there and they lose control. The average man cannot say no to intercourse no matter who is offering it and when. They did a exactly. study, evolutionary psychologists did a study where they went onto college campuses and they asked the men, they had a relatively average looking young lady approach men and ask the men whether or not they would want to go have intercourse right then and there in a room. And the vast majority of men said yes. So they, mm -hmm. they also did that with a very attractive young lady, but it was almost, even for the average looking woman, it was already almost a hundred percent. And then they right. did that with women and an average looking man, the vast majority of women were like, no, they were not interested in casual intercourse with some man that they just met seconds before. And then they right. had like a, a very attractive male and a very small portion of the women 
said that they would be open to see where things go if they if they went, you know, someplace private. But that's the way it is. The vast majority of men cannot control their libido. They cannot control their loins, yet they're constantly talking about how they're leaders. There's a book right. called The Athena Doctrine. I'll put the I'll put the um I'll put it up in right here, the um the audible book for you all to take a look at. There's a book called The Athena Doctrine, and it is important in that here, let me pause this. This is the book right here, The Athena Doctrine. Mm hmm Okay. And in the Athena Doctrine, it talks about how women-led companies do the best. They have the, the highest morale. They have the best financial. So men companies will do well. Men-run run companies will do well at stabbing people in the back, at might makes yep. right. At, but then what happens is there's a cost-benefit analysis that, that takes place where even though they start doing that, people's health in male-run companies begins to deteriorate because it's right. cutthroat. It is, it's comp competitive. It is all of those different things. But female-led companies right. have the, like, male-run companies' highest turnover. Female-run companies, and of course, you know, there's going to be outliers. But the female-run mm -hmm. companies have the highest morale, the highest work, um, the, the, the highest... Uh, positivity at work, the best cultures at work, the best profits in terms mm -hmm. of overall, not just the cutthroat profits that don't last, but the right. lasting profits. So women run companies will grow slower because they're not as cutthroat. But take a listen to this book. It is profound. It mm -hmm. will change your idea about whether or not men are these natural born leaders because the data shows that women are the best leaders. They are. Mm -hmm. And people talk about how men naturally provide and, and protect. But if you think about the provisions that even a woman's body creates to feed her offspring, if you think about, let me just say this, and then we're going to jump out of here. In the trans mm -hmm. movement, the way that, first of all, because might makes right and because it's, the, it, 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 it's violence, tr X, X, X chromosome trans people who are saying that they're men we showed the, the the documentary. How many how many XX chromosome people identifying as men are asking to be transferred over to the male prison versus right. how many XY chromosome persons are asking to be transferred over to the female prison? There are thousands of them. How many XX? I'm going to ask you. How many XX are asking to be transferred to the to the male prison, Princella? Shit, I'm gonna say zero or maybe one, but hey, dang, it, it, <laughs> it's just none. Really. It's zero. Oh goodness, that reminds me of that guy from your grinder app. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's zero. There are no yeah. XX chromosome persons asking to be transferred to the male prison. And because if you think about the nature of women, the nature of women is to protect. And this is why women are jumping onto this trans movement because there are XY chromosome persons who are exploiting women's natural need to protect. And so they're mm -hmm. coming in with their sob story. Meanwhile, once they take over, they still have been raised and they're still governed by the by the hormones and the brain of an XY chromosome person. Exactly. And the moment that they push you off your square, because I've heard them. Listen, if you don't know this phenomenon, look it up. Punch a turf today. I'm going to do a video on it. Don't worry. Because these XY, these <laughs> XY chromosome trans persons are coming up with a movement called Punch a Turf today. And they're hitting women because now they identify as women, but they still got that effing male brain. Mm -hmm. And now they're, they're, they're boxing you down. And I'm going to read some stories from you because it, it's, it's trending now on, on the internet. So I'm going to read some stories. Why you look like that, Princella? Because you just brought me back to a memory about one of the reasons why, like, I don't, I don't go to, I don't really go to clubs. So I went to a club, either, I think it was, I was 18 when I just turned 18 or I turned 21. I can't remember, but I went to the club with my friend on one of them birthdays and it was this person walking in the club. I knew it was a male dressed mm -hmm. as a female. Mm -hmm. I knew. And I knew when the person intentionally hit me, like mm. they were walking in the club and they was intentionally bumping up against women to start fights. Mm. And so that person 
bumped into me aggressively and I looked at it and I say, oh, that's a man. This motherfucker trying to start a fight. I'm not. Mm -mm. And he kept doing that to women until a fight actually broke out. Okay. So that he could break um, her jaw. Yeah. These, these dudes, this is why it's important for women to understand the nature of a man. A man can never be a woman. I don't give, I don't care what they talking about. Mm. The male's nature cannot be eradicated. Mm. It doesn't matter. His brain wiring cannot be eradicated. Mm. He's still a male. Mm. Wow, listen, you know what? Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you for coming out. Thank you for sharing that. We definitely have to set up another collaboration and we're going to, we're going to do some, some, some brainstorming behind the scenes and figure out more ways that we can come together and, um, and serve you all with mm -hmm. information, knowledge, self-love, empowerment, the I, the understanding about the universe, the, the seven hermetic principles, dark feminine energy, all of that, all of that, the reprogramming of the subconscious mind. You know what, I, I really, I, you know what, I can't wait till we talk behind the scenes because I really, really, really need to serve people more with the strengths that I have, like ways that people, that women can deprogram themselves because I know how to rewrite subconscious programming. I know how to help people rewrite. And so, um, so yeah, so we definitely need to, we definitely need to continue the conversation. And um, so listen, thank you all so much for coming out. Make sure that you subscribe to Princella. Make sure that you get her book. Make sure that you go to Amazon, put my book in your cart, on your wish list. And, um, Join the movement. Join the movement. All right. Thank you all so much for coming out. Princella, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And I am at Tanya TKO. Princella is the queen at the queen maker. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Make sure that you follow me. Follow Princella. And if there's any last apples, I'll make sure I get. Oh, there's two last apples. Let me get these real quick. Charlotte says, what a great show. Yay, Princella. She sends $10. Thank you. Trishonda sends six and says, for love you, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I will see you all in the next broadcast. What is your self-love lesson from today's broadcast? Type S-L-L. That's what we do before the end of every broadcast. So Princella, why don't we ask you real quick? Let me turn on the music really quickly. Mm -hmm. What is your self-love lesson from today's broadcast? What have you learned about a new way to expound on your own internal self-love? Let's hear that. And then for the people in the audience, type SLL and let's get your self-love lesson. Let's hear. To go to, to submit to what's easy to do for you. When you're in alignment, you will know it and you continue to live your authentic self no matter what anybody says about you because once you are solid in who you are the attacks whatever people want to do to you you will realize that ain't got nothing to do with you that's all them and that mm. makes you stronger in your convictions and it makes you more powerful and that's what we need to be is powerful in love harmony and authenticity Okay, wonderful, wonderful. The only thing that I ask is that we state these self-love lessons from the I. So what is it mm -hmm. that you personally learned about expounding on your own internal self-love? So I, from the I standpoint. I am exactly who I was meant to be and there's nothing wrong with me. Hey, I love that, I love that. And my self-love lesson from today's broadcast is about standing in my power and conviction and listening to the internal calling of the universe and listening the first time, you know? Um, this collaboration is definitely something that is long overdue and I could have listened to the internal calling months ago and I, out of apprehension and past collaborations that just went awry, you know? Um, however, I need, to, I need to stay vigilant what is it? Vigilant. I need to stay vigilant and continue that 
even if I've been hurt in the past, that I have to continue to open up and I have to continue to trust and let love in because when you close yourself to when you close yourself to pain you also close yourself to pleasure and if we want to let love in we have to stay open because we can try to keep the bad out or i can let me keep it i i could try to keep the bad experiences out but that also cuts off the good experiences and that's my self-love lesson and so i want you all to reflect and take a few moments to think about what your self-love lesson is what did you hear during this broadcast what did you experience? What new form of thought did you gain um, from this? Uh, let me see. I want to put the comments up on the screen so that Princella can also see them too. So type SLL and, um, and, and get your self-love lesson on the screen. Let me see. SLL, unapologetically, I am who I am. SLL, put me first always. So you're talking about yourself. I am open to be vulnerable with other women, continue to self-invest. Perfect, perfect. SLL, so that I know which ones to read. So type SLL, so I know which comments are going by for me to read. Um, SLL, I am divine feminine. Yes, yes, yes. Um, someone is talking about my black dress. Love yourself enough to not be a slave to other people's fashions and perceptions. Um, let's see. SLL, preserve, protect, precious energy. Share, share, share. I am. There are more than two options. Follow my intuition. I am me. Love, love, love. I am enough. Yes, this gives me so much. I, I will take care of my body. Let's change that to the present. I take care of my body. I must know and accept all of me. Yes. Yes. Y'all are my new BFFs. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. SLL. I am me. That is my power. I am where I need to be. I am divine feminine. Oh, this is beautiful. Princella, look at all the self-love lessons. This just makes me feel so full with love that after this broadcast that women were able to walk away with so many self-love lessons for themselves. I really love that. So Princella, thank you so much. Thank you for letting love in and letting us have this collaboration and answering these tough questions. You know, there were more that I had that, but we, the conversation was so good. We're going to do another collaboration. So stay tuned for that. Join the text notification squad so that you get a text whenever I go live and join Princella's behind the scene group so that you all can get schooled in some of these book breakdowns. So thank you all so much for coming out. I will see you all in the next broadcast. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good one, Princella. We'll talk right. behind the scenes for the debrief. So thank you all so much for coming out. I appreciate all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Whoo.